Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the combined Municipal Council meeting of Monday, September 9th. Everybody, please raise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilmember Coyle. Here. Councilmember Deal. Here. Councilmember Gomez. Here. Councilmember Joshi. Present. Councilmember Lombardi. Here. Councilmember Patel. Here. Councilmember Sandelsky. Here. Adequate notice, please. Adequate notice of this meeting as required by the Public Inc. Meeting Act of 1975 has been provided by an annual notice sent to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Sentinel on December 1st, 2018, and posted in Main Lobby Municipal Complex on that same date. Okay, we got the uh, review of the minutes, uh, A through D. Any comments? Yeah. Okay, we're moving on to the 2019 calendar year budget presentation. Uh, this is the work that was done by the uh, Finance Committee, the Council Finance Committee subcommittee. Okay, we have it up on the board. Okay, uh, first I want to start by thanking the members of the committee who have diligently over time always dedicated a lot of effort behind this process and I uh, just want to take a moment to recognize them. Uh, from the council we have, of course, uh, Councilman, uh, Vice President, Councilman Ajay Patil, Councilman Lombardi, myself. Uh, we've had also Fred Walke who's been in the committee for the last uh, 10 years now. Uh, has been a great deal of help over the years and uh, we're always grateful for his efforts and his commitment uh, to try to move Edison forward. Uh, Himanshu Majmunder, who has always been uh, with the committee, in the committee with us for a few years now, and Chrissy Butis, who was our first year on the committee. So I want to thank them all for helping us through this process. It's lengthy, uh, tedious, but it's, it's part of what we commit doing to making sure that we have the proper budget in place. So I'm going to just... Uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the methodology that we use, and we try to be consistent year over year just to make it easier for department heads to follow and understand the criteria that goes behind this budget. So um, we take the introduced budget by the administration and do a macro analysis. Uh, the Finance Committee normally meets with the business administrator and the department heads. Uh, we talk about revenues, uh, expenses, and everything else that will have impact, normally a 2018 review, and then everything that is being proposed for the 2019 budget. Uh, each department had introduced their recommendation. Uh, it includes a highlight of uh, what they budgeted for 2018, achievements for the department, and then 2018 serving as a baseline to what's being proposed for 2019. Uh, we talk about staffing, operating expenses, revenue generation for those applicable departments, and then of course anything that we can do from a process of technolo technology enhancements in order to be able to uh, create efficiencies and increase our productivity and utilization of labor. Here are some of the uh, just key statistics that we looked at. Overall, um, Total appropriations 2018, what's being budgeted and proposed for 2019, total revenues, amount to be raised by taxation, and then the overall impact that the tax rate will have on the average uh, municipal, the average home uh, on an assessed value, I think, of $179,000. So to summarize this, in a very simplistic view, we have in a 4%, approximately a 4.1% increase, and that translates to the average home about $8 a month. So again, really, this is with the intention of continuing to stay committed to what we set out to do, 
the, what the investments that we've set out to do, and then in many cases is really staying flat as to what we're doing from a staffing perspective and making sure that we do not impact services in any shape or form. So it's not a big investment year because it's very limited. We had a lot of gaps in, in revenue, uh, and then we have some cost commitments that have limited the additional investment that we do from any additional services, but it is not impact servicing. Uh, we're staying committed to public safety, public works, uh, and all other areas that are essential to keeping this town uh, um, at a high level of uh, high quality service. Okay. These are some key highlights of the appropriations and the revenues. Uh, we can see where a big chunk of the expenses or the increases in expenses are coming from. Of course, a lot of it, if not most of it, is contractual obligations and following really the steps that we have in the contracts, uh, pension payments, things that we are committed by law to be able to uh, make sure that we meet the state requirements. Uh, from revenues, of course, we see we talked about um, every year with the purpose of trying to keep this budget as tight as possible and limited revenues, the surplus is beginning to get smaller and smaller. So one of the things that we need to focus on as we focus on economic development and being able to catch up is really try to contain what we do without really having to cut or cut services and be able to manage with the revenues as they slow down and as expenses are continuing to increase. So um, a lot of it, it becomes heavy focus on managing what we got and being able to do with limited amounts of revenues that we are getting, not have we done in the past where we had additional surplus or we had um, one-time revenues that have helped us out a lot in the past. So we're managing with what we got. Our focus is on economic development and of course, uh, continuing to create a stable revenue base. You know, our objectives continue to be consistent with that. Uh, one is maintaining the quality of services that we have. We, we certainly do not want to, we're not gonna, do anything to go backwards. Everything is to try to go forward. We've put a lot of focus over the years in making sure that we elevate the level of services that we have. Uh, we put a lot of focus in making sure that our public safety is our number one priority. So a lot of what we're doing here is to make sure that we stay on that path and not be able to not deviate or go backwards in any shape or form. Um, of course, as we talked about, it's strong focus on revenue sources, new initiatives, and new revenue streams with the intention of creating stability in that revenue base. Um, continue to improve on strategic planning to stabilize future budgets and the tax rate. I mean, a lot of it has to do with what do we have in the pipeline? What are we looking that's gonna be a potential revenue stream? What do we have with that service that's gonna be falling off? When are we gonna do new investments and so on? So. Again, goes back to planning, planning for the future, and then executing in the present. Uh, continue to work on our uh, long-term strategy for health benefits cost. This is something that we've been talking about for years now, and is strategically trying to address that of how we go into future contracts and how we go into the years looking forward that will be able to have an impact uh, on uh, on the budget and will be able to have an impact on our expense base. Uh, of course, maintaining a balance between fair labor contracts and improvements of our workforce while being responsible to the taxpayer and of course, prudently positioning Edison to excel in the 21st century. So as we continue with our priorities and one of the things that has been um, a great benefit to the town is our credit rating and how we can demonstrate that Edison is financially sound or to the position that um, is seen as fiscally responsible and being managed responsibly. So 
Uh, we've been able to capitalize on that from having a strong credit rating. We're able to borrow money at significant cheaper rates and allow us to continue to invest in the needed capital improvement projects um, that we have to deal with. You know, of course, we talk about the pavement projects. It's all millions of dollars. Anything else that we do is bonding, borrowing money. This allows us, gives us some flexibility to do it at a cheaper rate. Uh, we will continue to prioritize investing in public safety. You know, our number one priority is keeping everybody safe. We'll continue to do that through capital investment and then a, a stringent hiring process. Uh, sustain technological initiatives to reduce costs and increase productivity. So the more that we can use technology to our advantage, and we've seen it in many areas, we've seen it in the finance department where we uh, the, the tax department using technology to maximize productivity and accuracy in what we do. So we'll continue to do that, look at those initiatives, and see what be, it's a good alignment for the town. Maintaining a low debt ratio while continuing to invest in critical in, uh, infrastructure. Again, it goes back to financial management. Is it how we do it, when we do it, and at what cost? Uh, we are still looking to uh, invest in a new DPW garage, continuing to be disciplined about the uh, investment in equipment that we have. When we talk about the fire department, I heard the chief many times say that this is the best the department is equipped in the years that he's been uh, uh, here involved as a fireman from the day that he became a fireman to now in the town. So that's always great to hear because, again, it it's our commitment to maintaining that discipline to getting the best equipment, getting the equipment to the people that will be out there and put their life on the line to protect us. So the better position we are to do that, the safer we are as a town. And overall, obviously, continue on the road surfacing project, any other infrastructure and facilities, capital investments that we would do. Um, you know, again, it's, it's never, budgets are, budgets are difficult primarily because is depending on, on what side you're looking at it is, you know, for some people is how much surplus can we generate? In our case, we haven't been fortunate enough that the economy has allowed us to grow back at the rate that it will cover all the expenses. So we've done the best that we can to manage with revenue streams, but we're also being responsible and committed to what direction we want to take this town. And what, the, and what commitment we have to the residents and the level of service that we do. So, you know, again, I, I thank everybody who took part of this process, the directors, the, the BA, uh, council members, committee members, and of course, uh, we ask for everybody's support to make sure that we stay on the path that we committed to our residents in providing the services that we set out to do. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other comments from the members of the committee? Uh, Council President, I just want to echo your sentiments and thank everybody involved. I want to thank the directors for being prepared with their presentations and coming prepared to answer questions. Some of those questions dealt with the presentation and some of those questions dealt with things completely separate from the presentation, so I thank you for that. And also a special thank you to Maureen for accommodating all the members of the committee in terms of the hours we could meet and setting up the meetings with the directors and so forth and so on, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Council President. Yes, sir. I'd also like to thank Maureen and the members of the committee and the members of the public that were involved in this committee. I know it was a lot of long hours I've sat on this committee, and I know there's a lot of tough decisions that you have to be made, and I appreciate all the time that you put into this, and I know you did it very thoughtfully and you worked hard doing it, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we are moving on to we also have uh, the 2019 solid waste budget for final adoption. Um, okay, so we are now moving on to reports from all council committees. I'll start from my right. That's McCoy. Councilor President, can I yield uh, my time to the end, please? Sure. Uh, Councilman Deal. No, I'm sorry. Councilman Patil. None, sir. Councilman Joshi. Yes, the library board meeting will be held tomorrow uh, right here in council chambers. 
and uh, we did not have an August meeting, but we will have some updates tomorrow. Councilman Judge, I believe it's in the Edison room because we oh. have the election tomorrow down here. I stand corrected. Thanks for that. <laughs> okay, Councilman Lombardi. None, sir. Councilman Sandelsky. Yes, I know I'm not a member of the Open Space Committee, but I did stop by because I had some uh, a high school uh, sophomore give me some um, uh, questions regarding trails and bike paths and stuff to J.P. Stevens in a way that we can help uh, alleviate some of the traffic situations there. So I did discuss that with the Open Space Committee, uh, Esther and Bruce and, and uh, Honorable Frank Greco. I know this is uh, Bob Deals. I think, Bob, it's your committee, right? Isn't it the open space? But I, I did stop by because I had some specific concerns, and they showed me the maps and what they're planning on doing, the impervious road surfaces, and I'm sure Esther will talk a little bit about it during the open part of the meeting. But uh, it was a very valuable meeting, and it was, uh, it was time well spent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to uh, points of light. Uh, Council President. Oh, that's right, Council McCoyle. Uh, Council President, I just wanted to report our beautification committee with the mayor. We are working on a project on Silver Lake uh, with the county and our assemblywoman, Nancy Pinkins. So we're hoping to get that adopted soon. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. And also we've, done, we've had some meetings for the parks and areas to be improved around town. And so far it, it's been moving forward. And I appreciate the help of the administration and the cooperation of uh, recreation and Parks and DPW. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're moving on to points of light. Um, um, on Wednesday, September 11th, we will be having the 9 and uh, 9 11 uh, memorial service at Lake Papiani at 6 30. Um, I want to thank the Department of Recreation in advance for putting this together. Um, it's, always, uh, it's always good to take a moment, and as we say, we never forget. For those who gave up their life, unfortunately, uh, due to actions of those who don't believe in our liberty. So uh, please, if you can make it, it's always good to come out and remember and remember those uh, that lost their lives on that day. Um, on September 20th at 1 p.m., we're going to have the POW MIA um, Recognition Day at the POW Monument here at the entrance of Town Hall. And then on September 28th will be the Fall Family Spectacular on Amboy Avenue from Jackson Avenue to Altuma starting at 11 a.m. Uh, any other points of light? Okay, moving on to the agenda items. Uh, from the Business Administrator, resolutions A through E. Any comments? Council President. Yes, sir. Uh, to the administration, the A, could you give me some detail on the Mott McDonald? Yes, um, this is the continuation of the contract that they already have in effect for this year. Um, some of the additions to get them to the end of the year is for the Metuchen pump station, Tingley Lane um, sewer emergency repair, and um, depending on the referendum tomorrow, we'll need additional services for them. Um, to go forward till December 31st. Could, could you just walk me through, when you say continuation, what was the previous? The previous contract we did with them was for um, 286. 286,000? Mm-hmm. We did that in January. So this is just a, a, a change in terms for other work that may, that was needed or may be needed in the may future? Maybe needed, yes. Okay. It's an amount not to exceed. And uh, can I just have a detail of what to expect only because if the transfer uh, happens, whether this referendum moves forward or not, I just want to know what part of this forty-five thousand is going to be used for that. That's all. I, I don't. I don't have that specifically. That's why I have an amount to, to not exceed forty-five thousand. Okay. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Yeah, Council President, uh, yes, I have a question for Maureen. Uh, just following up on the the same question here, Maureen. This forty-five thousand. Dollar, the services for the additional services or the, the ongoing services from the Mac, 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 McDonald. Does this also include the service to identify the missing sewer lines that were identified in the original report? No, that's, that's not part of this contract. That's not part. So 
if we need to find out those missing one we that 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 we've or they've already done the legwork for that that's okay. that's in the um sewer department ourselves now oh, thank you Council President Maureen, part of this though is for the shared service agreement with Matuch and for the new pumping station, right? Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Council President, I have a question on resolution B. Okay. Is the two years contract for the printing service uh, through President, a question to Maureen. This is a two year contract. Is this the first time we are doing two year or this is always a two year and not year to year? Most of our contracts can go for two years, so it is. It's, it's eight different companies um, that we use in various different departments. Again, it's an amount not to exceed amount. True, but is there any reason that it's not for a year? Or it was just- No, they, they allow you to go for two years, so we do. Okay, thank you. Because it's a big- Maureen, do we get a bigger discount if we go out longer? My, I, some t sometimes yes, sometimes no. I, I, I won't say that's always the rule. Okay. Um, the process to go to bid is, is quite cumbersome, so when we um, can go for 24 months, we do. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? All right, moving on from the, uh, to the Department of Finance, resolutions A through D. Okay, from the Department of Health, resolution A. From the Department of Law, resolutions A through F. Any comments? Council President on F. Again, thank you, Councilman Lombardi, for updating the purchase of the land for from the, uh, by Middlesex County. Uh, just a question. Uh, again, Councilman Deal can answer on that. Uh, recently, there is a quite a bit on acquisition of the open space. Uh, is this going on the Rossi? I assume. We don't know that. I, I, I mean, I can, I can triple check, but I would think that if we're using Middlesex County open space money would have to go on the Rossi. I think that, that's a defining uh, you know, part of, of using that fund. So I think it would have to go on the Rossi. Okay, thank you, sir. Council President? Yes, sir. I'm fine um, with whoever answers this question. Uh, for A, could, could someone walk me through what that address location is, 1000 US Route 1 in Describe yes. the building or what? It's, it's uh, the existing BJ's um, the warehouse center. Okay. Um, they're, uh, <clears throat> they're, they're looking to do some major changes to their building and to try and do it through zoning uh, variances would just be too cumbersome. So <clears throat> they've asked us to investigate it potentially as required. That location's had some issues. Uh, I understand. Yes, uh, Councilman, Council President, Councilman Coyle, we. Uh, the Redevelopment Committee met to discuss this. Uh, Councilman Patil, Councilman Lombardi, and myself, we discussed it and we went over it with Mr. Northgrave. So we went over all the details. If you, if you need anything else, just you know, stop by. I can give you the details. Uh, Council President, there's been a lot of vacant stores uh, in that location, so I'm sure it needs to be looked at. We're trying to keep them competitive with uh, you know, some of the other uh, Costco's and, and, and the like, and they're doing some re they're doing renovations and trying to uh, stay up to date, and I think that's a good thing. They're, they're behind the high tension lines there, and <clears throat> they're not in an easy spot to see. So we gotta kinda try and help them, I think, any way we can. I think our history, uh, four major franchises did not make it in that corner marquee. La Bonpere, I think Burger King was there, and maybe the others. <laughs> One of the things that we had to do was we had to add, we, they, they came to the planning board and asked for a digital uh, billboard to try and have people see it a little better. Um, retail is having a major, major hard time right now, I think as you realize, Councilman Coyle. Um, and we want to help them any way we can because of the rateables they bring to our town and the tax dollars. They don't bring any school children into our town. And, um, and we're seeing this at some of the major malls as well. Uh, Simon, um, the Woodbridge Center Mall. Um, if you read about it all across the country, it's happening. So they have to figure out ways to reinvent themselves to make themselves relevant in the, in the age of Amazon and, and some of these other companies. Thank you, Council President. 
Thank you, sir. All right, from the Department Council, of oh. President. Yes, sir. I had a question with regard to uh, D, the ordinance with regard to the tree fund. Uh, Mr. Murphy, can you describe that to me in a little bit more detail? Yeah, the, uh, the idea, uh, I think it's Councilman Joshi, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's sort of a Councilman Joshi, uh, is the way the ordinance currently works out, we have to install these trees on public property, um, and that's it. Um, the amendment would allow residents to say, I'd like to have a, 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 a tree placed on my property. There are certain criteria would have to be unobstructed on a public way. In other words, you couldn't be put in a backyard. Um, it would go to, uh, I don't have it in front of me, I think it's the tree fund uh, committee um, for approval, and then it would, it would require the BA to, or the, or the you know, the finance department to confirm there was a sufficient funds and the homeowner has to accept full responsibility for maintaining the tree and indemnify the township um, you know for uh, for any any anything came out of it so that's a concept it would be a, it would be a placement of trees on private property in addition to public property but it would be at the election of the private property owner yes yes oh yeah they have to they'd have to ask okay. then the, the committee would determine you know like you know, if, if there's inadequate resources and you can only put in three trees, the committee would make the determination to put it here, here, and here, or whatever. Uh, and then uh, Maureen's office would, would determine that there is sufficient funds uh, and we would, you know, we would have a standard form for them to indemnify and, and that type of thing. I'm not sure if it's the same ordinance, but under, um, in, in new developments, the developer has to maintain the tree for a period of, I believe, two years before the owner of the property actually takes over the maintenance. That's not the case in this instance. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that's that, that would be a separate development ordinance. Yeah, okay. I, I, I didn't see it here when we were making those changes. So, okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Northgrave and Maureen. I just want to thank you both for working on this very quickly. Uh, I think that there's, you know, as I said before, there are quite a few people, uh, excess and over a hundred people that have voluntar voluntarily stated that they wanted to have trees and being able to plant them. Uh, we're using the tree fund. Keep in mind, it's just, it's about $300,000. So, you know, I think we should start using more funds like this. We, the money can only be allocated towards trees, so we might as well use it, you know. <laughs> trees don't go bad over time, they just grow, and I think it's a very good uh, effort for beautification overall. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to uh, the Department of Planning and Engineering, resolutions A through E. Okay, from the Department of Public Works, resolutions A through F. From the Department of Recreation, resolution A. From the Chief of Fire, resolution A. From the Chief of Police, resolutions A through B. A and B. And then from the township clerk, uh, resolution A. <laughs> Any questions, comments? Okay. All right, moving on to um, a council member of the planning board. Thank you, council president. Uh, we haven't had a meeting yet this month. The next meeting is Monday, September 16th at 7 p.m. Thank you, sir. Okay, moving on to unfinished business, uh, ordinance 2048-2019. Uh, these are ordinances that are up for final adoption. Uh, ordinance 2049 and ordinance 2050. Any comments? Council President, uh, yes, ordinance 4.2049. Okay. Uh, this is establishing the Department of Water and Sewer. Is through the president, uh, council president Maureen. Will this be a separate department altogether? And if I read the ordinance, there will be director position appointed? It will be a separate department. So this will no longer, the sewer, which is current sanitation, will no longer be under DPW? Correct. Okay, so this will be additional director position apart from DPW and park and recreation? That's correct. Correct. And the term of the, the director will be 
will be set with the term of mayor or it is independent? Yes, uh, set with the term of mayor and or four years. And yes, though it is ordinance uh, uh, creating this department, do we know how many people we are planning to hire? Not yet. Not yet. We're working on that right now. Okay, so obviously if we don't know that, we don't know the cost impact to the resident. Not yet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I want to follow up. Just if I read it correctly, the ordinance is written so that in the winter time, people from the sewer department can be used towards. They plow. Okay. They, mm -hmm. they currently plow, but absolutely. So that wouldn't happen for the people under the water. It would be the same. It would be the same. Okay. Correct. It, if they're doing water business, that takes precedent or sewer business. But okay. if they're not, they plow. Okay. Thanks. And uh, Council President, I do have a comment. Uh, well, I want to spend about a couple minutes discussing uh, 2050, but I'll wait and let, unless uh, anyone else has anything to say regarding the ordinances. Council President. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, to the administration, <clears throat> uh, 42048, uh, this is my third time I've been voting on this. Uh, I'm hoping it's my last <clears throat> time to lease. Um, a garage to put our equipment in. I just solution was on the last meeting to hire the architect for that. Yeah, I just uh, in my experience, it's just uh, there are several DPW areas across the state that use overhangs, tent overhangs. I mean, I know that we're putting our equipment inside a garage, but I, every time we're spending almost the amount of what it costs to do a tent overhang. Uh, uh, the that particular area that we rent, it's challenging even to get in there. Uh, so I, I just hope that we exercise the best economic choice. Uh, I know we're doing a lot at once, and this has been comfortable, but I'm just hoping that we would move towards, you know, the, if the garage is coming, great, but I, I think we could have used this money towards a uh, tent overhang that they has a salt bin that could have been used for the three years we have. And, and um, I mean, it's much easier to build, build, but we don't have the money. But I just hope it's the last time I'm voting on this. And the second question, I'm going to 2049. The, the amendment of this ordinance, could you walk me through the difference of what we had previous during this Bedore administration? We, like we had an ordinance there in place. And what's different than what we're doing now? To, I didn't think we'd have to change the ordinance. We didn't have a director. It, it, the sewer fell on and the water fell under DPW. Okay. All right. Thank you, Council President. I'm, uh, I'm not, I have nothing further for Councilman uh, Joshi. Thank you, sir. Great. Uh, Council President, I want to reiterate how much time and effort it took to present this ordinance, and I thank the administration for its support. Considering that Edison is among the most diverse communities in the United States, I cannot overstate how appropriate this set-aside program is. The purpose is to establish a set-aside program for qualified women, veteran, and minority-owned businesses so that 5% of our government contracts can essentially be reserved for these three groups. It is too common that these business groups, especially women and minorities, are unaware of the process on how to bid or the contracts that they can be bidding on. I'd like to list some of these uh, for informational purposes, these, these contracts include architects, lawyers, attorneys, uh, civil engineers, auto mechanics, industrial hardware suppliers, HVAC contractors, printing services, those we're voting on today, food and vending machine suppliers, medical services, financial and banking services, such as retirement planners. Uh, there are government contracts that people can and should be benefiting, uh, that there are government contracts that people should be bidding on as it would benefit all taxpayers. More competition saves taxpayers money. <coughs> so make no mistake about it, this program will challenge the status quo of government contractors and will benefit all taxpayers. This helps address a big issue, uh, not just our township, but all governments face where a contract will go up for a public bid and the only entity that is aware of the process or the bid itself is the same entity that bid last year during the same 30-day 30 30 window. Uh, I again stress this program that uh, this benefit, this will benefit all taxpayers because it facilitates competition. 
and still requires the state law, uh, still requires to follow the state law where the lowest responsible bidder, bidder will supersede. So in order to qualify for this program, a business must have its principal business in New Jersey and must be independently owned and operated with at least 51% of its ownership as either women, veteran, or minority owned. In order to count this program, veteran, women, or minority owned businesses would have to get their certification through the NJ Division of Revenue. I'm excited to have introduced this, and I hope it becomes a law tonight. Thank you very much to the administration again. Thank you, Council President, and uh, thank you, uh, Council President, thank you, uh, Councilman Joshi. A quick question on this ordinance, uh, 2050. It's a great ordinance. Uh, the, the contracts which we say that unspecified services, are those part of this ordinance, or that's, that will be dealt separately? Yes, to my knowledge, as it's written, and when I was going over it, it's it's all contracts. Uh, Maureen actually sent me a full list of all the contracts that we have, and that are bid on. So it's five percent of those in the dollar amount. So unspecified services would also be included in that. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> Council President. Yes, sir. Uh, first, I, I do think this is super necessary. And I want to thank Councilman Joshi for reaching out uh, to me uh, personally about this. Um, one question I just have is the 5%. Can you just walk me through the 5% part and how that uh, someone gets a $300,000 contract? Does that allow the veteran to be entitled to 5% of that contract? Just walk me through the 5% part. No. So the, the purpose of this ordinance and the intent is to have goals in place. So it's not just that someone can walk in and get a contract, but more so it's the purpose is to facilitate more competition and have a set aside program for those three. So the 5% is actually split with 33% each. So it's uh, each group, veterans, minorities, and women uh, are, would, be, would be counted towards a 33% within the 5%. Uh, the other part I had a discussion on, not with you, but I'd hope that in the future our council will look at, is that when someone gets a contract for 250000 I know the state's required to give local companies um, certain work from that performance of that contract they've been awarded to, whereas if someone receives a $300,000 contract, they would offer opportunities to the local area contractors to move dirt, supply lumber, or have some portion of that. And I hope later this is the beginning of another opportunity where we use our local tradesmen around here and our mom and pops because some of the contracts we uh, are healthy in Edison and we're lucky to have the revenue base we have. Uh, so this is great we're doing this and I'm looking forward to adding more to this particular field. Thank you, Councilman Joshi. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to discussion items. Uh, starting from my right, Councilman Coyle. Thank you, Council President. Um, I just had a few things. First, uh, I, ha I received a few complaints on traffic speeding on Ovington, uh, and I also received some complaints on Amboy Avenue and also MacArthur Drive. The other question I had is people reached out to me to ask what the process was to get a speed bump on their road. Could someone from the police department or administration walk me through what the residents need to do to make that request? Maureen. Any changes to traffic would be a study under the direction of engineering. The police would do the labor and we would refer it to the engineering professionals 
Um, off the top of my head, I believe for uh, speed humps, if we are going to go there, certainly that's going to impact public works for plowing and, and road maintenance. But there is a uh, DOT, uh, I believe, covered under the uh, Title 39, which is the traffic law statute. There's a maximum number of vehicles on a road to have a, on a road. So like Route 1 could never have a speed hump, too many vehicles. So it's secondary or third level roads, and there's also, I believe, a maximum speed. So those factors would be taken in. We would have to do a, a traffic count, and then we'd forward it to the engineer professionals for recommendation. Any request? either directly through the mayor's office or through Chief Bryan, and, and we'll take care of it in the traffic bureau. So there's no requirement that the street petitions to have everybody in agreement that they want a speed hump. This is this decision is made through the administration and the public safety. Well, I'm sure the, the town would want to make sure that most residents on a block would agree before one person dictates an entire streets. I'm just saying currently the stance of the administration is unless a, a street already has speed uh, bumps on it, we, we have not been putting them on because of the public safety issues and the plowing issues that we have with them. It, it makes it very difficult to plow those streets and I believe fire doesn't do, the fire engines don't do well on, on speed humped roads, but we could certainly do the traffic counts. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, to the administration on that subject. Thank you. I have um, just a few other things I wanted to go over. The has there been progress on the Little Avenue opportunity to widen Little Avenue? Any uh, discussions on land there, acquisition? There has. Um, it's it's actually um, getting a report together to hand over to legal to um, talk to property owners. It's progressed that far. And. Um, I was pleased to see there's been some uh, conversation with the Board of Ed on queuing the traffic with the buses. Correct. Um, I, I heard it went well. Um, they did send out information to all the residents and to the students and their parents that the buses weren't queuing up the same way down Jackson Avenue. And I think that was good through our administration talking to the Board of Ed and this council because uh, that, that could work out to be uh, a good thing. And I, I haven't tested it through the busy time. Uh, but so far, it looked like it has worked. And as far as um, Jackson Avenue, are we looking at any opportunities for the, uh, and I don't have to answer it today, but for the parking, whether we're going to move parking to one side or have permit parking or the queuing of the families that queue up and, and cause the uh, traffic there. They're, they're, they're idling for their kids, and it, which is wonderful to have a safe place but it starts to pile up to have 18 cars and there's one less lane to, to have the flow of traffic. So I just didn't cross-reference that. Um, I'm gonna yield my time to the council. I have a few more things I have to get addresses on. Uh, if you'd allow me, council president, to speak at the end, I'd appreciate that, sir, thank you. You can continue now, sir, it's okay. I have to go, I need time to yield. I, need, I can't finish right now, I need to finish at the end, sir. You don't, you, you have the question? I don't have or? the information right here. I have to go through an email. Okay. Councilman Dio. Thank you, Council President. Uh, just a, a question uh, for engineering. Um, how, how are we making out an update on the swale between Abbott Court and Calvert that we've been working on? Uh, the, that, that has been turned over to uh, uh, actually the DPW uh, and doing that, but I'll get an up update and uh, provide uh, that to the mayor and council. I don't have uh, an update regard regarding the construction progress at this moment. Okay, uh, with a meeting a couple weeks out, uh, could you send me an email on that uh, when you get the update? Yes. Okay, I appreciate that. And then uh, for the residents, uh, the 9-11 Memorial is this Wednesday and it is stated that if it rains, we would hold it inside. Over the past many years, there have been a couple of occasions where we've had to be inside. Um, they're forecasting maybe some thunder showers late in the day on Wednesday, so uh, you may want to keep an eye on that. Been a little bit of a point of light. It was nice to see the front page of the home news today uh, with a very nice picture of the monument. It was advertising the different memorials and services that would take place throughout this area, and certainly uh, this has been a a service, a memorial service that has been not only well attended, but 
a very well received and well done by everybody involved. So again, that's Wednesday here, Papiani Park. If it rains, we're going to be inside at 6.30. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Councilman Patio. Uh, thank you, Council President. To Council President, question to Maureen. Uh, do we have ordinance on the the well water usage and the any sewer bill related to that? There is an email that I forwarded to you. I didn't get anything back yet today. Okay, but do we know if is there any ordinance that determines any rates or fees or any structure for the well water usage and the I don't, I don't related know. sewer bill? I, I send it on to the department to get an answer. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilman Joshi. Yes, uh, Council President, I do want to have a discussion for something that I've asked. Uh, well, I sent an email to Mr. Northgrove uh, as well as the business administrator, and it's related to the budget. Uh, I have some hesitation on on the budget and adopting it just because of the timing right now. And I wanted to know if you could clarify what would be the process for us to go back to DCA and say that we need to perhaps use more money or what's what's the what are our worst case scenarios? I'm just concerned because the referendum is going to happen tomorrow and I believe or I would expect uh, that we're anticipating it to be a yes vote. And should that happen, what, what would we do if we need to allocate more money towards creating a new department altogether? Because that's not in this current budget. Well, I can clear your hesitation, sir, because that is not part of the current fund. So it would have no bearing impact on this budget. But. Where, where would, like we don't know how many people we need to hire. So, but, but it's not part of this budget that it's up for adoption tonight. But we need to hire, well, we need to have, I, I was told by the business administrator that she would need to spend about 1.5 million in capital expenditures. But Well, capital expenditures would Again, even even if it was included as part of this budget, it it has it's going to be part of the debt service, so not part of the operating expenses. But um, so I'm not sure that I'm following outside of that. I, I'm just concerned that there's a referendum up tomorrow, right? And before the end of this year in December, there are expenses that we'll have to make because of January 1st. Right. We're going to need to use funds to prepare for that. So wouldn't it make more sense to perhaps vote on the budget after tomorrow? Uh, Maureen, you can clarify the specifics or, or Bill. Yeah, the, the idea, I mean, it's just, the, first of all, the, the budget, um, well, put that aside. The, the, only, the only thing you're looking at in 2019, the only thing potentially looking at, assuming a yes vote, is, is and again, it's, it's an estimate, but 1.5 in capital expenses. There's no operating money in 2019. If you, for whatever reason, decided you'd wanted to absorb 2000, first of all, you, you shouldn't absorb 2020 expenses in a 2019 budget. But second of all, that would all, the, the way the way the system, way the DCA allows, it, at this point, we're, we're, you know, we're just speculating. There's, there's no, you know, until the vote occurs, it is what it is. Um, but if you wait, then you will, you will wind up with it in the 2019 budget even though it's really 2020 expenses, and you'll effectively saddle the taxpayers with an expense that should be borne by the ratepayers in the 2020 budget. So you can, there's, there is adequate, uh, the state allows for an emergency appropriation, which I think Maureen addressed in her email to you. Um, the state allows for an emergency appropriation, 
And the beauty of an emergency appropriation is it gives you the time for DCA to take a look at it. If it is a current expense, that they're gonna expect that it be paid from current revenues. But if it is a longer term expense, or if it is an unusual expense, sometimes there's a blip in, in budgets caused by any number of things. It could be a, uh, you know, a massive unexpected tax appeal, it could be uh, you know, a lawsuit, it could be a situation like this where all of a sudden there, there's a, an expense has to be taken in um, that is difficult for a community to absorb in one budget year. So DCA in those extraordinary circumstances would allow you to, to put it out over a few years and let the revenue from the water and sewer catch up with the expenses that were incurred. So there is no impact. There's, there's in, in my way of thinking, and certainly you know you were elected to, to make your, your own decision. But to my way of thinking, and I think Maureen agrees with me. I think the council president agrees with me. There is no impact to 2019. So there's no reason to delay 2019. This is an issue that will need to be addressed uh, as part of the 2020 budget. But there it is better addressed, and, and there are systems set up to allow that to be better addressed. Um, you know, if, if in fact the event uh, passes as, 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 you, as you expect, um, that can all be addressed in 2020 as part of the 2020 budget process. And at that point, you will have the revenues to help, uh, you know, equal that out. So I, I understand that part of it, but through December, like w right now we have an ordinance where we're changing so that we can have a new director for the sewer and water lines. Wouldn't we have to hire that person before January 1st? I mean, even as, uh, you, uh, assuming that the person came on board before then, that cost would be minimal. You know, it, it's, it's, and, you know, we just, have, and we have the sewer utility yeah, already. The sewer utility, would, yeah, the sewer would utility already right exists. This year. But it's not, it wouldn't just be that one person. It would be all the people that we need to hire within that apartment, which is but why would you hire them before January 1 if you weren't going to be running anything? Before? They, why would they start working? Why would they be drawing a salary? before? Other than the director, I agree with you. That perhaps you have the director on a few weeks beforehand to assist uh, you know, in, in preparing uh, the department for operation. But I mean, you're not going to have you know, guys that ready to, to fix pipes when there's no pipes to fix until January 1. But on, on January 1st, American Water is, is out, correct? December 31st. December 31st. Yep. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't we need to, I mean, I'm just throwing out a hypothetical. What, like, wouldn't it just logically make more sense to have our employees lined up, yeah. even if it's a week or two ahead of time before January 1st kicks in? I mean, we, we, I guess we could look at that. But I mean, it's still, you're not talking you're, not, you're talking fairly minimal amounts, and we also have, remember, the only thing we're adding is the sewer utility. We're not, I mean, I'm sorry, the water utility. <laughs> Confusing myself. Uh, the only thing we're adding is the water utility. We have existing DPW employees. We have existing sewer utility employees. We have, you know, if they're, God forbid, at 12.01 a.m. on January 1, there was the, a water pipe burst, we would have personnel available to assist with that. Um, you don't have to have a fully staffed department. Um, I mean, you certainly have to make the hires, but I think, if, if I remember correctly, it's, it's it, you'd have to have the employees there, but we have existing employees, so there's no, I mean, it, it's, it's I, don't, I, don't, I don't see an impact. I, I, guess, I guess just a fundamental disagreement with your premise that there's gonna be this huge impact that needs to be addressed and we need to hold up the budget. Um, and certainly, I, I, you know, I respect the fact that, that you may not agree with that, but it just seems to me that it's, we're really talking about essentially nominal costs, if any, that can be absorbed in the existing sewer utility and in the existing sewer utility uh, capital budget to the extent that, and, and candidly, they will be used by both departments, and you, you could just adjust that in a 2020 uh, budget year. So what about the equipment? Okay, that, that, takes, that addresses the employees component of it, but what about the equipment? Like, yeah, that's, we, that's the 1.5, 
and that would be a capital expense, and it would be, it would be, as I understand it, and perhaps I'm treading out of my own area now, but as I understand it, it'd be borne by, initially by the sewer utility budget, the capital budget for the sewer utility, and then can be adjusted in 2020 to, because you're, you know, you're not gonna buy a pickup truck for the water utility. You're gonna buy a pickup truck to be used by the water utility and the sewer utility, and then there'd be an allocation between the two divisions, essentially. You're gonna have one department. As of January 1, based on this ordinance, you're gonna have one department. So the sewer utility and the water utility will, in, in essence, merge. Um, so that's, that's it, it, it's an accounting issue, but it's not, it's, it's, you don't need to raise the 1.5 this year, and if you do, then you're going to have the taxpayers pick up the cost for all that cost in this budget year. If, if you know, taking it, taking it all the way out, the taxpayers would pick up that 1.5 in this budget year for a capital expense. And I mean, you can adjust it again, perhaps in 2020. But from an accounting perspective, that's much more difficult than than doing an emergency appropriation if it comes to pass that you need to spend that money. And yeah. that and that the, and the emergency appropriation is is uh, designed to, to deal with that in the next budget year. And again, for clarification purposes, capital is not included in the current fund. You will have a small s portion of the debt service that's already scheduled for that, but by the time you roll that out and you move it into, into your assets, I mean, you're talking about minimal incremental costs until you move it in from, from yeah, a purchase. Yeah, and I, I just want to be clear. Assets. I mean, what we're talking about here which is the exact opposite of what we've been saying all along. The current fund affects all taxpayers. The water is for 12,000 customers. It has nothing to do with our current fund, and it never will have anything to do. Otherwise, we're taxing every resident for it. So I just want to be clear. The water utility will be for 12,000 customers. No impact to this $142 million budget, none. None. Oh, Council <laughs> President. And it'll reflect in their water rates, right? It'll reflect, right, okay. Get to do an emergency appropriation, as um, Mr. Northgrave said, that's an accounting mechanism that the state gives you time till you get to your next year's budget. Council President. We've done it a bunch of times here. So, just, okay, I, I understand that part of it too. Now, what's the downside of just having that plan Despite the fact that it's just for 12,000 people, what's the downside for having that plan and then waiting until we're after not tomorrow? because the plan has nothing to do with the budget. We're adopting the current fund budget, which has nothing to do with the water. So let's separate the two. A plan is one thing that we're working on and we're going to have nothing to do with the budget we're adopting tonight. Nothing. It's not going to flow through it. It's not going to touch it. Because if not, it would affect every single resident if it was flowing through the current budget. And it's not, and it never will be. It'll be a separate utility that just affects this, the, the water users. Never will those funds. Because otherwise, it'll be reflected in your property taxes. Because otherwise, everybody's going to be paying for, you know, the people in, right. in all the other customers who are already paying Middlesex, right. they would be paying for this. That's why you open a separate utility. And we have that. <clears throat> Council President? Yes, sir. Um, I understand uh, Councilman Joshi's questions. I think some of them make sense to ask. The conversations I had with the administration, uh, well, this would be for 2020. Um, and from what I understand, I spoke to American Water. Uh, as far as some things for Councilman Joshi, we know we're going to have meter readers for those 12,000 customers. I'm told by American Water they have two meter readers full time to, to go on the lawn and use a device which they are going to transfer over to us uh, to read the meter. All, all, and we use Edmonds today, so there's not a lot of cost there. Okay, so it just. At the last meeting. Okay, so th that part I think is a good practice of New Jersey American Water to assist us with that transfer and give us their handheld devices. And from what I'm told, all the meters are Wi Fi. So our, our employee would go up to that lawn, read the meter, and continue. So if it's two employees, that's great. He said he may need a backup for the holidays and things like that. Um, I'm anticipating 
uh, that a lot of this will impact 2020, but I don't mistake Councilman Joshi's questions for any other thing I may be missing. I'm not, just I'm to... just making it clear. It doesn't have anything to do with the current fund. His questions are all valid. It's just, it has nothing to do with the budget we're voting on tonight. But, but while we're on this same question, I just, another question came to my mind. I know currently in this particular contract with New Jersey American Water, they've capped out on their expenses to make repairs. We pay for any repairs, correct? Correct. So for 2019, how did those repairs be allocated to the 12,000 customers? Because I know we had several issues with the water with them, or how many I, breaks have we had? I, and I where did that money? We don't, we don't run that part of it. I don't, I'd have to ask them for that reporting. Okay. So I, that's a question I'll, I guess I'll wait for the next uh, meeting, is that for the breaks that may have happened on paper, because I just want to make the story straight, that for what breaks we had, and I know a few of us spoke about it, and um, I know that they have exceeded the cushion amount in their contract of what repairs they would make. So we're at a pay to play on every break with the New Jersey American Water, correct? We pay for any break today. That They don't compensate us for breaks. So if, and I'll just finish. If for whatever that answer is, I just wonder what breaks we paid for and who absorbed that money and how was that allocated because the for 12, the 12,000 users, I don't. To, for the, so I just want to see that we're doing the same practice moving forward for 2020. That we're that's, not, that's what I'm stating. If we did, three, if we did two million improvements to, to those breaks, whatever practice we had, I hope we practice the same because that's what we, we absorbed that cost uh, because but, of but we're going to be doing a lot more because we're, we're, you know, we've said a hundred times through all these meetings, we're not going to just be reactive. We're going to be proactive. So and not only are we going to be fixing all the breaks, we're going to be moving forward in our capital plan. And just for record, have we paid for any breaks from New Jersey American Water in 2018? Council President. Council, uh, I'm I, not really sure. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't I have anything to do with that. If there were breaks and it is charged back it would be charged back to the users in their in their monthly in their monthly uh, checks. I don't think it would go, uh, in their monthly bills. I don't think it would come through the township. Just uh, when when New Jersey American, if them. they fix something and they have gone over their cushion amount, as you put it, I think the excess, I guess, would be um, goes to the uh, users. Goes to the users. Uh, there's we don't pay them anything with their monthly bills. So I don't know. I think that's what Maureen's saying. We don't handle that side of it. That would all be handled through them. I don't think it would come. So, from what I'm hearing, the rate payers have been absorbing the, the rate breaks. payers pay the rate. They've been paying. So, anybody in New Jersey American Water out there today has been absorbing any breaks that happened on their block or a block associated with the 12,000 yep. customers. We have not paid a single dime we don't. in this year towards in any towards, year towards in any year. Okay. Thank you, Council President. Okay. Councilman Joshi. I'm not sure if you had anything else, any other? No, I, I understand, uh, you know, I, I have certain questions related to how we would, how we're actually going to be spending that money, uh, but I, I guess there are certain parts of it we would just have to agree to disagree, I think. I, I, don't, I don't agree with voting on this today. I respect all the work that's been done, I just think that we should have a plan for the whole township. I know you're, I know the statement right now is that we're only going to be hiring one director, but I simply don't understand how we wouldn't be using, we wouldn't be hiring more people prior to January 1st if the vote is yes tomorrow. And I, more importantly, I just don't understand why we wouldn't wait until after tomorrow to vote for this. But again, it will never, just for clarification purpose, it will never be in this budget that you're voting on for tonight. But so whatever the spite is, you will always have a separate vote. That is going to be a completely separate budget that you're going to be dealing with. It's not going to be this budget. So I understand the capital expenses part of it, but the employees part of it I don't understand. It's, it's, it's going to be the same no, thing. The, the same the directors thing. It's, it's are like still the sewer utility. That's, that's all in there. It's in that budget. It's not in the current fund budget. You're voting on the current fund budget. You're going to vote on a water utility budget next year that's going to address all the employees. There, like, like we said, there's, there may be some float 
at the, at the end of this year to just to bring people on board, but it'll be reallocated from the current fund to the water utility. So it'll be a separate, and only those people who are using that water will pay that part of the budget. And I understand that. Okay. However, if we're going to hire, apart from the director, I guess we agree on at least the director. Okay. The employees that are underneath the director, such as for water or additional sewer, they're still going to be part of this budget. Not the municipal budget, no. 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 Okay. Yeah, it'd be a separate budget, and I think that I think what Maureen is saying is that let's assume you hire someone, and if you don't want them to start as of January one, you have them start twelve fifteen, like you said a couple weeks before. She's saying that the current sewer fund could assume those payments for the two weeks or so that you're going to be paying these employees, and then okay. the the users would pay it back. Okay. So you borrow, and so yeah, this current fund has absolutely nothing to do with that. If, thank you, Councilman Lombardi, for simplifying that. If we need to borrow, it will come from the sewer, and then it will get pulled out of that, and then charged back to the users. So it absolutely has no bearing on this budget. Okay. So, Council President, it, could the administration just walk me through? I'm just listening to Sam, uh, Councilman Joshi, and. I, I support us needing this, but my question is, what's the difference of us doing this tonight or at the next council meeting? That, that's all I need. Just educate me on why today and why not Because the nothing you're talking about tonight, in any of these issues have to do with the current fund. And, and we're under, we, we, we all received the letters from DCA that we need to adopt the budget. And 20 extra days. And, the net, and I believe the last date is the 20th. And the next council meeting is what? The 22nd? So, we cannot okay. go past that so, date. You so all have the letter. You're adopting this budget with the anticipation of the cost of this director, correct? Yes. I, not, the no, not the current fund. Not the not current fund. Not the current fund. I said it's in the sewer. <laughs> okay. Then we, it's an interfund, and we will pay it back. It is going to hit 2020 with a water utility budget. What is it? September 25th. Yeah, it's passed. So there is a difference 20 days from if we did it. Duridge, you have a letter. It, you have a letter from DCA. Okay, thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, still in discussion items. Uh, Councilman Lombardi. Uh, none, sir. Councilman Sindel. Okay, I have a couple, three. Um, maybe more. Um, since Carl's not here, I'm going to ask Michael, um, what's the status of our parks, Mike? Did you, did you get into that? Yes. I have the email uh, from the contractor this morning. Uh, the current, this is, I'm reading from uh, the contractor's email himself. Uh, the current status is, uh, Polanski Park, uh, all play equipment is installed. The stone is placed. Uh, there is uh, still the need to install some concrete curbing uh, and to be poured in place and also need to landscape uh, that area. Old post park demo is complete. Uh, they're removing the old equipment from the site today. Uh, it may be completed uh, by, by the time we sit here tonight. Uh, next week, the schedule is to build a new equipment and install the stone and concrete curbs, uh, as well as uh, pour in place uh, the concrete. And th that is what they provided to us today. And you know, I, I, I do realize the concern, uh, you know, of the mayor and council regarding uh, the, the deadlines and so forth being not being met by the contractor. So what? Is there, is there a penalty in these contracts if they don't finish them by a certain date? Yes, there is. Uh, in my professional experience, it is very hard and difficult uh, for a municipality to enforce those penalties uh, in any real effective manner. Only when there's, when there's a situation where the contractor has been a year 
and there's no performance, and they've, they've, blown, the, they've blown every deadline uh, for about a year, then you start talking about it, and then ultimately uh, something can be done. But in the short term, something like this, as I, I know relatively speak, I know they have completely blown their deadlines, but in, the, in relationship to the actual contract term, in my experience in dealing with enforcement of uh, liquidated damages and so forth, it's very difficult based on what's going on right now. Okay, um, so, I mean, we're now approaching where we're gonna start getting into the colder weather and everything, right? Absolutely. So, so I mean, if, they, if we don't stay all over their case to get this done within the next month or two, we're, we're gonna be into the winter again, and then it's gonna just, you know, I mean, then, then what? Then where are we going? I mean, that's what I'm saying, that we have to stay on these guys to make sure this gets done. Whether it means calling them every day, getting all of their rear ends, I mean, that's what we need to do. We still have the retainage, right? We're holding back on it, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Also, the old post light, road light, anything on that? Any new developments on that? Are you referring to, I may be confusing, are you referring to the Edmonds, Edmond Road? No. Uh, no. Okay. No. Old post, I'm not familiar. You're talking about the light? The light, the signalization, the timing. Okay. Oh, the signalization and the timing right. at Old Post Road. I, I, let me just check my notes. Bear with me one second. I, I haven't heard anything, Councilman, okay. but I, I know Brian Piccarello. Um, I, I've seen emails. Okay. We're just waiting to hear something. Can we get an update on that? Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, also, uh, I was told by Freeholder Tamaro, and I don't know, maybe you can correct me on this, Maureen, that um, uh, the tree fund, we're allowed to use 40% per year for parks. 20. Is that true? 20. No, he said 40. Could you check that out for me? Yeah, I don't think it's 40. But, but we do. We, we are. We transfer that in every year. Okay. All right. So if we need some extra money for the parks, mm -hmm. let's do that. I also want to thank Jay for getting the uh, grass cut on James Street. Appreciate that. At least it's not as much of an eyesore there. It's still got the concrete pieces on there. I did want to make a couple of uh, remarks regarding our uh, vote that we have tomorrow on the sewer and the water. Um, I think we've We've come to the end of a long road in the great debate over whether the town should lease our sewer and water system or keep it in-house. And as you can see tonight, we're a little even confused about setting up the new system. Something of such critical importance to the taxpayers of Edison should never have been subjected to such politics, misinformation, disinformation, and grandstanding. First it was, Suez is gonna put lead in our water, an obvious lie. We have no lead in our water now. We won't have any lead in our water in the future. So Water Watch came into town at the behest of the petitioners to tie the town's hands so they would have no flexibility in making the decision. The petition was written to restrict the town from negotiating a lease agreement with any water company such as Middlesex and New Jersey American. The sewer system will be held privately by the town for at least four years if this referendum is passed. There will be no shared services like we just did with Metuchen on the pumping station in order to save money for both towns with any of the water systems. Everyone, please ask yourselves why 22 years ago did the mayor and council vote to lease the water system? The answer is that one, the cost of in-house operation was astronomical. Two, reduced capital capacity for the town and three, rate increases. But now we have the Clean Water Act, which will also add millions of dollars to the overall costs. As Maureen said, it's gonna be borne by those ratepayers in the South End. We also cannot do this work as efficiently as a private company who has the engineering expertise, manpower, and the knowledge to deal with such a sensitive issue. It's sad to me that the 12,000 residents of South Edison will bear the burden of all the costs, all of the costs, of starting up a water utility from scratch. So what happened last week? Just to confuse the voting public more, you have a school board member going on the radio to claim that we will expand the water company to the North End too. 
It's impossible, and another lie. North Edison's water lines are owned and operated by Middlesex Water Company. A few weeks ago at the last council meeting, the business administrator said that the water rates for Edison Water, currently operated by New Jersey American, would go up at least 50% when the town takes over the operation, management, testing, billing, and emergency repairs for the 12,000 customers in the South End. I live in the North End, but I represent the entire town, and I am concerned for the rate hikes that are coming their way. Water line breaks like we had a few weeks ago on Executive Drive are becoming more and more prevalent. And as it was stated, January 1st, when we get a water line break, you won't be picking up the phone for New Jersey American anymore. It's gonna to have to be done in house. The township's aging water infrastructure is 22 years older. All of the costs that require compliance with the Clean Water Act will be reflected directly in the South End water rates. It's my job to make sure that the choices we are faced with will be decided by all the voting public of 59,000 registered voters, not just the 4,900 petitioners. Two members of this council took part in confusing the people of Edison in order to win an election, and please don't insinuate that you did your job to get this into the voting public. You voted yes on the ordinance so that all the voters would not have a say. Councilman Deal, Council President Gomez, Councilman Lombardi, I applaud all of you for doing what our oath of office said. So tomorrow, all of Edison will get to decide what the future will bring to our water and sewer system. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, sir. Okay, we are moving up Council to- Council President. Our, yes, sir. I'm sorry, I just had a few things to add uh, from the time I yielded to discuss. Um, to the administration, 82 Philo, I've gotten a report and um, I sent one email about some. What's, what's the street? I'm 82 from? Philo, P H I L O. The resident had complained about some flooding in that area. <clears throat> I was over there. It is complicated to figure out where our position is and responsibility. However, if the engineer can go over there and take a look, um, she sent me a tough email the other day, and uh, I know we're working on it, and um, I just would hope we can get some type of report to get back to her through email. <clears throat> Thank you. Also, I have Edmund off of Route 1. <clears throat> Do we have a status of the DOT and the lane striping? Is that complete? Yes. Where do we stand? Yes, I, I spoke with Miss Meredith Hammond of the NJDOT this morning, and she advised me that all the striping is complete in that area, as well as the signage. I know that was in, the signage was an outstanding question uh, by one of the uh, 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 council members, um, and she informed me that all the signage, all the temporary signage has been removed, and all the permanent signage has been installed. Uh, and she also informed me that there were two signs, non-DOT uh, signs that were installed by someone and they were removed. I, I, I believe they were installed perhaps by the DPW, but those signs were removed and the DOT is holding them uh, because it, it, it was on essentially their, their property, right away property. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the other question I had was, a f I received several phone calls on the campaign for the referendum from Suez. Um, and the phone calls I received was the amount of funding they put forward to, for this referendum. And uh, it was challenging for me to answer what they're allowed to do and can't do as a future vendor. Could the counselor walk us through what's allowed by law and, and just so we can solidify the residents that their campaign is separate from the township of Edison and what they're doing is or out of our control? Yeah, the ordinance that, that uh, the pay to play ordinance cover, governs uh, contributions to political parties and to, and to elected officials or those running for office. So that would have nothing to do with, with this. Um, I, I don't, I haven't looked at it and I don't want to offer an opinion uh, as to 
you know, ha any spending um, as to, uh, you know, a special election, it certainly wouldn't affect their status in Edison, whether, you know, whether they have obligations or not. You know, they have, uh, they appear to have pretty competent lawyers, so I'm assuming that they're complying with any, you know, election law enforcement commission requirements. I guess my question was, I mean, <laughs> I don't agree with the imbalance of a grassroots campaign in a multi-billion dollar company from France, but I'm just, they have every right as a vendor, well, they're not a vendor yet, mm -hmm. so they have every right, knowing they're still in the bidding lane process but have been accepted, could you just walk me through the gap between the acceptance of their bid and their current status of not being in, contracted yet? They just, they're allowed to do this? There, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, this gets back to uh, Councilman Lombardi and I often debate the, the impact of Citizens Union. Um, but it's basically the, the Supreme Court has recognized corporations are people and they can, they can do whatever, um, you know, whatever rights they want to assert. There's really nothing that um, that you know, they have they have a right to express their opinion and to uh, the only the only thing that would govern them is would be election law enforcement commission regulations. Um, and and again, I'm I'm not in a you know, I'm not in a position nor would I want to opine as to whether or not they are in compliance uh, with those regulations. Uh, again, I would assume they are, um, but you know I haven't looked at it and you know there's there's nothing that there there's nothing. Uh, illegal about them distributing, whether it's it's you know whether someone disagrees with it is is that's an entirely different question. Yeah. Um, I certainly just first um, looking at from an administrative standpoint, we have no control of what they choose to do. I mean, I disagree uh, personally with their advertising on News 12 sent out three mailers to the record that of residents. I did not personally receive three mailers and the disadvantage the grassroots campaign has. But if it's, it's within their jurisdiction, and obviously it's out of the mayor's control to stop it, it's what it, it, it's going to be, if that's correct. But um, I also want to make comments uh, towards a rebuttal of Mr. Zendelsky's comments, which I respect his opinion, but I want to clarify the position of some council people that may have been with this forward push of a referendum. First, to clarify, this council had a chance to modify, amend, and approve a referendum right here at this dais. Um, prior to that, we presented an ordinance that the council would review and our, our attorney could have reviewed as well. Uh, this council disagreed on that referendum. Now, the referendum forward may not have it was definitely not the same referendum that Food and Water Watch presented. And even if it was, this council had a chance to modify it to the favor of Councilman Zendelsky's issue with the water. Council President, Council President. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. Yeah, thank you, Council. And I'm not here to pick on you, Councilman Zendelsky. I just wanted to clarify there was every inch of opportunity to separate these 12,000 customers with this here. Uh, and that could have been thought through the mayor's office and the attorney. We had that referendum brought to us. This council knocked it down. So therefore, Food and Water Wash presented their own written referendum through their own experts with, you know, without the consent of those who were involved in not wanting Suez from this council. So that was written by another party, presented, and, and, and push forward. I think all of us, if we had a chance, I, I think we'd wish we could have modified this to meet the referendum that would be best for the community. <clears throat> but when I'm listening to the comments Councilman Zendelsky made about the water cost, I'm not aware of all the costs we're gonna absorb because I'm hearing conflicting stories of what Currently, American Water is paying, and the ratepayers, who have just we've just listened to our administration say that the current ratepayers are paying for those absorbed cost today. The breaks everything into their cost. Now, I won't mistake the fact that New Jersey American Water is absorbing 
more administration, more time, they have some, they have some benefits. How much of that benefit is not leaning towards the rate payer? I don't have that analogy. But I'd be safe to say that if we're going to hire three people to read water meters and to adapt admins, which is a system we already have in place, and we're going to take on breaks like the rate payers were taking on before, I don't know the cushion of that difference today. But I will share this council, the, any council person that supported so as not to be a part of our community, not to be a part of creating a pension plan for their, for their business, to take our rate payers from 33 million to over 150 million in 40 years. We did not write the referendum or be involved in the referendum to my knowledge. And I wish today that we did modify and write that referendum in house here because I'm quite certain we would have worked something out to make sure that we can subcontract the water, which is just simply 12,000 customers. But everything aside, currently today, we are operating our sewer. We are billing our, our customers today with our sewer. We've been carrying our sewer. We've been doing this for, for decades. So that's just clarifying my stance. Uh, Councilman Delsky has a right to his opinion, and so do I, and I just want to clarify where I stood in this uh, campaign. Thank Council you, Council President. President. Yes, Council sir. President, I just wanted to make some things clear, and, and maybe uh, Mr. Northgrave can help me out with this, but as I understand it, when the petition was formed, right on the petition was the proposed ordinance which is being voted upon tomorrow. That ordinance was prepared by, I remember um, one of the petitioners, I think it was Mr. Hahn, said that they, they retained an attorney from some Appleseed group that most likely prepared the ordinance, but whenever somebody signed the petition, and I'm not sure whether you, Councilman Coyle, signed the petition or not, but you were on the front of the petition was the language of the ordinance. Also, once the required amount of signatures was obtained, it was out of the council and the administration's control. We could not change any part or amend any part of the ordinance. It had to go on the ballot as is, and that's gonna be, uh, which is on for tomorrow. Um, and I think that was one of the issues. The other thing that, because they required the necessary amount of signatures, we couldn't have uh, it voted upon in the general election because once they requested the special election and they obtained the necessary amount of signatures to have a special election, it had to be a special election. So I disagree with your stance in that, number one, we could not amend or modify the ordinance in any way. Um, Councilman that's, Lombardi. That's, how, that's as I understand it. Uh, Mr. Council North President, can we, get, can we hear from our Councilor Northgrave about this? Yeah, there's I was speaking of it before when we had it in our hands prior to them getting involved. When we presented it through Councilman Patil and I, we presented a referendum to review. Well, you guys petitioned people and got them to sign the petition. Uh, this is prior. This was uh, at a different date. I'm not I going to. Oh, I, understand I, I, believe, I believe. At a different date. Okay, so you're, you're referring to the non-binding non -binding referendum that was suggested by both you and Councilman Patil. And that um, excuse me, I'm sorry, Council in the party. That I thought we could have modified and sent to the attorney for a better review. Correct. Yeah, I, but that's not what we're voting on tomorrow, I, Joe. I, I, what I'm, I'll wait for uh, Council in the party to finish. I, I just wanted to ask Mr. Northgrave, could we, could we modify after we had that petition from the petitioners, the 4,900 petitioners, could that be modified by the Council? No. Okay. All right, that's what I thought. That's, that's, that's what I was referring to. I wasn't referring to that, that non-binding thing that came up four or five months ago, Joe. I was talking about what we have and what we're looking at now. I like to deal with facts and what the people have in front of them to vote on, not hypotheticals or all the other smoke and mirrors stuff and all the, all the uh, Facebook Live stuff, you know, with the meetings with Keith right. Hahn and all that other stuff. So all right, we, sir. I just, I just want to deal with the fact. All right, okay. I just want to have my rebuttal time, Council President. I appreciate it. And, and uh, President. that's the way I understood it, um, Council President. And the, the same way uh, Councilman Lombardi understood it, that's the way I understood it. It could not be modified. And sorry to hear that now 
you're looking, uh, you would wish we could have modified it now, but the wish is gone and people have to vote on what they have in front of them, Joe. Okay. Council President, <clears throat> and I'll be brief, uh, to the Councilor, uh, do you, re Mr. Northgrave? Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Do you recall a time where a Councilman Patil and I presented a non-binding resolution? I, I, <laughs> I remember there was a discussion about a non-binding referendum. I, I honestly do not remember, Councilman, whether I was given language or if it was a resolution. I thought it was a resolution that was raised at the dais the night of a council meeting, but I could be wrong about that. I will not tell you I have perfect okay. recollection. Um, I, I can refresh your memory, that, uh, and, I'm, and I understand you're being fair. The, we had one, in fact, the language wasn't changed. It was out uh, from a different town. In fact, the town was not changed on that. Do you call that? I think the town was still stated in the, in the top. Uh, it was a cookie cutter order. I, I, will, I, will take, I, will, I will accept your representation. No, I do not okay. recall that. But is it fair to say at that time, you, if that referendum was brought to the council's attention for discussion, would you have the chance to modify and look at that uh, referendum? Okay, Council McCoy, hold, hold just just a second, please, because we're we're I'm leading to, to speculation. The question, I'm going to just make we're, a comment. I'm going to make simple. a comment because that was something that was raised the day of, given to the council, given to me on that day, and then you're asking the council to make a decision whether it was right, wrong. Nobody ever had the opportunity other than yourself, sir. So, to lead to believe that we had something that we can work with is, it, it's not now you're not being fair. Okay. Yeah, council council President, President, you know, Councilman Coyle, just to correct that, I offered this council to table this, and we had two days to amend that. But on something, effort. right, but it was on something that big. I mean, was the intention to try to move this forward? And again, I'm not getting involved in the criticism of going back and forth, but just for the record, something this serious comes on the day off and then we are supposed to digest that in a day and a half in order to put that, that's what held it back. I mean, that's reality. It wasn't whether we could have gotten it to the right place or the wrong place. We hadn't even gone through the meetings. You gotta remember, part of the process is we're gonna be open about this process. We hadn't even closed the public portion or even remotely closed to close to the public portion on, um, on the Suez meetings. And then suddenly we moving this forward. So part of the hesitation from this council is we never seen it, and now you're giving us a day and a half to act on it to stop the meetings from happening. I, it, Count, it, Council President, putting the, the timing issues aside, right, in terms of when it was brought to the Council's attention and, and, and the fact that there was a vote requested on the night of, but putting the, that aside for a second, I think we're, we're losing sight of the fact that that would have been a non-binding referendum, right? So. That's essentially a poll, right? It, it would have no um, uh, binding effect on this council or on anybody for that matter. And when you look at the timing of everything, let's assume that non-binding referendum took place at the general election in November, um, assuming that the general public polled that they wanted uh, the, the water and sewer to be kept in house. I don't, the, the council would still have to consider the proposal by Suez, or they could consider, again, doing what we're doing now, but we, we would have no way of knowing that, and also we wouldn't have time to do anything because from November to the end of New Jersey American lease on December 31st, there would be absolutely no time to start a water utility. Uh, if I can just clarify one other issue, just, uh, I'm not sure that it's, I think it may be pertinent to this discussion, if, if I, don't, I don't remember the timing of that, that resolution, nor do I know the timing of when the, the petitions were being circulated, but if the petitioners didn't like the non-binding referendum, they still could have moved forward and we would be in the same position we are now and there, would have been, there still is no ability for the council or the administration to have amended the, the referendum presented by the petition. I'm not sure that that necessarily affects this conversation, but there, that, that we, could, we, we could have a non-binding referendum that would be occurring in November that could be mooted uh, you know, after tomorrow. So it's, it's, that would have, 
you know, it, it, that part of it was we could not change. Whatever the petitioners came forward with, with the adequate signatures, that had to be presented regardless of whether there was a nine bonding referendum occurring in November. Yeah. Councillor, yeah. just there was one point there during, and we had probably five or 10 minutes debate there when this was introduced, this uh, non-binding referendum was introduced on the dais. We also talked about, you know, we are flexible to make it binding, and we can have further discussions on that, but it was shot down yeah. at that point. Okay. Uh, just wanted to correct, so we were open to make it binding. Uh, just, just, just to be clear, even if you made it binding, uh, and I'm, I, I, I never looked at the question because I'm, I'm not sure that, that you have the ability to do a binding referendum on this issue. But even if you had, it still wouldn't have affected what you know what the petitioners are doing. That that was the only point I wanted to make, Council President. And, the, and then just the uh, Council President, just to refresh everybody's memory, I do remember that, and I remember there was a huge typo. It mentioned a different town in there too. In in the in the actual non-binding, there was a, there was a typo in there that when yeah, when we had an opportunity to read it, the thing that they wanted us to vote on that night, I, which we never had a chance to look at, it, sir, there was a big sir, typo. Sir, it was not voting; it was introduction. It was um, yes, we were aware of that, but you know, for the purpose of, of we're still in discussion items and and trying to move forward. I, I, I think we'll set our piece, and if, if there's anything more in particular that we want to add. Yeah, Council President, I just want a 30 second rebuttal on this. Sir, sir, but please note that your time has been extensive on these rebuttals, yeah. and Council I'm President. asking, I'm gonna give you the time, sir, but I'm just to be fair, is we've been going back and forth on this yeah. for quite some time, and it's not about us being right or wrong, is please, the focus, and I always ask this from the beginning, Let's think of what we are here to do and for the purpose of doing the right thing for the residents. So go ahead, sir, do your 30 uh, seconds. Council President, I do respect uh, your opinion, and we discussed this on having these type of comments, but if I'm going to be accused, I'm gonna protect myself of the hard work I chose to do, and I'm gonna protect myself for the stance I took and when I had the time to stand my ground. But I just, to clarify, um, there was a point where we had the time to review a referendum opportunity. I will go back and redact that video and present our discussion. It, what the damage is done because we didn't write the referendum. Someone else wrote this referendum. It is a strong referendum. Uh, but I'm also very strong to believe that our residents who work or are unemployed in Edison are qualified to do work in our township. And I believe that we can also recruit people to be employed in our township that live in Edison, or if we have to recruit outside the box, I'm quite certain we would, but we benefit the most by staying in control and not giving a pension plan to a, a large company outside this uh, state and outside, inside this country. Thank you, Council President. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. Uh, we're moving on to the regular portion of the meeting now. Uh, we are, I have a motion to approve the, uh, the minutes from meetings the 14th, 23rd, July 18th, July 8th, and August 26th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, so we are moving to the 2019 calendar year budget for final adoption. Do we have a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Council Member Coyle. No. Council Member Deal. Yes. Council Member Joshi. No. Council Member Lombardi. Yes. Council Member Patil. No. Council Member Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Council President. Yes, sir. Um, and I know that you're trying to move the, the meeting along. Um, but I did have a comment before the vote, but I, I didn't want to interrupt you. And I'd like to make those remarks now, if possible. I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Yes, I should have asked for comments. My apologies. In my eight years on council, one of the most difficult tasks is evaluating the budget year after year and determining whether an increase is needed, knowing that the council's actions may have a financial impact on the residents of this township. I sit on the finance company uh, committee, and each year we pay close attention to every aspect of the budget. Unfortunately, this year, due to significant revenue shortfalls, 
additional contractual obligations and no increase in assistance from the state, the township is again in a position where in order to continue providing the same level of services and public safety, we must consider an approximate 4% budget increase. Now you all heard from Council President Gomez as to the reasoning of the Finance Committee, so I will not belabor any of his points. And I know that Council President Gomez asked each member of this council prior to our last Finance Committee meeting if they had any concerns or amendments that they wanted the Finance Committee to consider before the vote. With the exception of Councilman Coyle mentioning something about someone to promote the town um, with regard to um, planning and engineering, I didn't receive any emails, I'm not sure if Council President Gomez received any emails from any other council member suggesting any changes or amendments in the budget or um, giving ideas or, or alternatives as to how to lessen the increase or to have no increase at all. And I fear that the members of this council who you just heard vote no on this budget with no alternative stated are acting irresponsibly to the taxpayers and are acting out of political selfishness and cowardice. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the 2019 Solid Ways budget for final adoption. Any council comments? Okay. They'll have a motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilmember Quill. No. Councilmember Deal. Yes. Councilmember Joshi. Yes. Councilmember Lombardi. Yes. Councilmember Patil. Yes. Councilmember Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Okay, uh, moving on to Council President's remarks. Um, just want to remind everybody that there is a special election tomorrow. Polls open up at 6 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. And this is, again, to vote on the referendum. Uh, and again, as Councilman Deal said, I just want to remind everybody that we have the 9-11 memorial here at Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Okay, uh, moving on. We have unfinished business, uh, ordinance that, ordinance for further, for the consideration, <coughs> excuse me, ordinance for further consideration, public hearing and final adoption, uh, 2048. Uh, clerk, please read. Ordinance authorizing a month-to-month -month lease for storage of township vehicles and equipment. I want to open it up to the public for any public comments on this ordinance. Motion to close the public portion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ordinance 2049. Uh, clerk, Council please President, I think oh, there has to be a roll call. I'm sorry. <laughs> Council comments. Any council comments? No. Uh, roll call, please. Need a motion. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm a little off today. <laughs> I have a motion to so adopt. Moved. Second. <laughs> roll call, please. Councilmember Coyle. No. Councilmember Deal. Yes. Councilmember Joshi. Yes. Councilmember Lombardi. Yes. Councilmember Patil. Yes. Councilmember Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Okay, ordinance 2049, clerk, please read. This ordinance amending various sections of the township code to establish Department of Water and Sewer for the township. Okay, uh, any, and, yeah. opening it up to the public for any public comments on this ordinance, correct? Yep. Yes, sir, on this ordinance. Name and address, please. Uh, Ralph Scarola, 4 Longview Road. In reference to this ordinance, right, and just, I'm gonna walk through this real quick. From what I understand on the, going through all the reports and everything, that the sewer department had a surplus over the last three years. In this ordinance, is the money addressed at all, where being there now is gonna be a sewer and water department, that that money that's coming in, that profit from what I understood, I could be wrong, I, thought it said five or six million was made over the last past three years. 
is that money going to be allocated strictly to now to that department and controlled that by that department or is it going to be put into some general fund and just no that can only be used in the utility for that utility correct Un unlike in the past though N never since i've been here have okay. we ever used money in the current fund from a utility okay from what i understood though if there was a surplus of six million dollars for the last i i read in a budget mm -hmm. Just to say, and I know we've been back and forth with all this, just to make a point that we wouldn't even be here with this Suez thing if that money was put back into the infrastructure. So just as a point, is that how that money will be now allocated in? In the future, all those monies stay in the utility, yes. Okay, and is it addressed of how that money will be allocated within that? Like, it, in other words, if we have a surplus, is that money going to be addressed towards capital improvements, maintenance, Correct. emergency repairs? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's not the way it was, if I understand. No, it, it was. It was just the last couple of years that a surplus was generated. We were actually in a deficit at the, in the sewer. If, if you look back over time, it's just the last couple of years that we've had. Yeah, surplus. I thought it was about the last three years. But any of those monies now will be used for the um, items that you said. Okay, say. and as uh, Councilman um, Joshi was saying, so there is money there then. So you're talking about hiring people. If that's already established, then there's money in that. There's money in the sewer. We're bringing back the water you do. In South Edison. Correct. But, okay. Correct. I'm but, only talking, we were only discussing water tonight, nothing about sewer. Okay, my point exactly. So now they're going to be a combined department. Combined department, but not combined budgets. There will be a separate water utility for the 12,000 customers that utilize that utility. So okay. don't confuse the two. It's just the workers and the director will be running both departments, but there is a sewer utility, okay. which the entire town uses and a water that only 12,000 customers use. Okay. And the water will stay separate. All, okay. all bills, fees, expenses stay in that water. Okay, so the money that was in the surplus for the land. In the sewer. Only that in the sewer. That will stay in the sewer. Okay. Will not cross over into the water it can't. Okay, but that'll establish the sewer department or help? It will help. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's addressed, and it will be addressed as they're saying there's different various sections. Correct, up. this is just about the director. Okay, fair enough, thank you. Anybody else on ordinance 2049? Good evening, my name is Laura Scarola for Longview Road. Um, we understand that you had the contract for Suez I believe it was since June 2018. I'd like to know if you read the contract. I'm speaking to the council. This is specifically an ordinance 2049, ma'am? Right, right. So I would like to address Mr. Sandelsky's. Um, this is, but this is not dealing with the contract. Yes, but I think we're talking about after the vote tomorrow with, you can with come a yes back vote. Address. This is only specific on comments on this ordinance only. You can come back for public comments but not on this specific ordinance. So I can readdress this in a, when you're done. Yes. Okay, I'll come back. Thank you. Anybody else on ordinance 2049? Motion closed. I have a second. Second. Okay. Council comments? Okay. Motion to adopt. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Coyle. No. Council Member Deal. Yes. Council Member Joshi. <laughs> Council Member Lombardi? Yes. Council Member Patel? Yes. Council Member Sandelsky? Yes. Council Member Gomez? Yes. Okay, ordinance 2050. Clerk, please read. Ordinance amending chapter two of the Code of the Township of Edison, setting forth procedures regarding the establishment and administration of a set aside program for qualified minorities, women, and veteran businesses pursuant to local public contracts law, NJSA 40A colon 11 1, in connection with township purchasing and procedures uh, and procurement. Okay. And I'll open it up to the public for comments. Yes, Ms. Orkin. 
Hi, thank you. Maria Orchid, 83 Jefferson. I just want to vote up to express my opinion to say that I'm in favor of any help to any veterans organizations or women's groups or those uh, minorities. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in this ordinance? I have a motion to close. We have a second. Second. <laughs> Council comments. Okay. I have a motion to adopt. Yes, motion to adopt. Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Council Member Coyle. Yes. Council Member Deal. Yes. Council Member Joshi. Yes. Council Member Lombardi. Yes. Council Member Patel. Yes. Council Member Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Okay, moving on to new business. Uh, ordinance 2051. Clerk, please read. Ordinance amending Chapter 9 General Licensing and Business Regulations, Section 28 Towing Regulations of the Township Code of General Ordinances to address certain mileage and distant requirements and other corrective numerical changes. Thank Council you. President. Yes, sir. I move this ordinance be passed on first reading, published according to law for further consideration and public hearing set down for Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. I have a second. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Member Coyle. Yes. Council Member Deal. Yes. Council Member Joshi. Yes. Council Member Lombardi. Yes. Council Member Patil. Yes. Council Member Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Ordinance 2052. Clerk, please read. This ordinance, this ordinance amends Chapter 25, Tree Section 25-13, Tree Fund of the Township Code of General Ordinances to expand permitted uses of the Township Tree Fund to include plantings on private property in accordance with the limitations to be set forth therein. Council President, I move this ordinance be passed on first reading, published according to law for further consideration and public hearing, set down for Wednesday, September 25th, 2019. We have a second. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Coyle. Yes. Councilmember Deal. Yes. Councilmember Joshi. Yes. Councilmember Lombardi. Yes. Councilmember Patil. Yes. Councilmember Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Okay, we're moving on to the public comments on the resolutions. Uh, I'm going to open it up to the public. Uh, Mr. Diamond. Bruce Diamond, 74 Calvert. With um, 462, the BJ's, is it the entire two buildings that are in that shopping center or it's just the BJ bu building and the triangle of retail stores next to it or it's just the triangle of retail stores and BJ stays the same? It's the, it's the entire parcel. It is, it is the four corners, the parking lot. And the and the, the BJ's and that triangular piece that's next to BJ's. And what about the building on the to the left where the uh, Ergy Center was built two three years ago, where 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 uh, Staples was, I think, and uh, uh, and yeah, uh, the, the tile place is there. So. No, it's it's just the BJ's and the piece connected to BJ's and it's and the surrounding parking lot. Gotcha. Okay, and then on 463. Um, that's wonderful that we're finally getting the uh, piece of property and uh, I think the uh, county votes on it next week and it's wonderful. Um, hopefully next year we get the uh, Shea property. Hopefully the county has money. We obviously don't. Thank you. Thank you I sir. wish it was all funny, Cheryl. It's just so unfunny. I want to go home and cry. Anybody else on the resolutions? I have a motion to close. So moved. Second. Okay. Okay, anything to be pulled from the, um, for a separate vote? I'll start from my right, Councilman Coyle. So. <laughs> Councilman Deal. None, sir. Uh, Councilman Patil. None, sir. Councilman Joshi. None, sir. Councilman Lombardi. 463. Okay. Uh, Councilman Sandelsky. None, sir. Councilman Coyle, anything to pull from the consent agenda for a separate vote? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so 
Motion to approve the consent agenda, LAS resolution 463. Actually, you know what? We'll go over to 463 first. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Councilman Lombardi, resolution 463. Uh, yes, uh, Council President. Um, I just wanted to say how happy I was that this was on. Um, this resolution is necessary to have in place before the freeholders vote on it, I believe, on the 19th. Um, and I know that there was some inquiries by some uh, of my council colleagues up here about what the county does for us. And I know that after that, uh, Deputy Freeholder Director Charles Tamaro sent a huge list of things that the county does for Edison. And I did look at that list, and it is extensive. Um, but this is one of the very good things, and we're happy that the county is uh, purchasing uh, this property and preserving it as open space. And uh, I'm just happy to see this on the uh, agenda. Thank you. Thank Council, you Council President. Yes, sir. I want to say also, uh, the list is, is pretty impressive that is sent to us on what the county does. This particular piece is an important piece. And as was brought up by one resident tonight, there's another piece right next to it uh, that would really uh, be beneficial if we were able to get that also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Motion to adopt 463. So moved. Second. Yes. Well, please. Council Member Coyle. Yes. Council Member Deal. Yes. Council Member Joshi. Yes. Council Member Lombardi. Yes. Council Member Patil. Yes. Council Member Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Okay. Motion to approve the consent agenda less resolution 463. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Coyle. Yes. Council Member Deal. Yes. Council Member Joshi. Yes. Council Member Lombardi. Yes. Council Member Bertil. Yes. Council Member Sandelsky. Yes. Council President Gomez. Yes. Okay, we're moving on to oral petitions and remarks. I'll start from the list. Mr. Bruce Diamond. Bruce Diamond, 74 Calvert. Before I, I get to the main gist of my uh, talking points, I, I am curious if I could ask Councilman Coyle why he voted against the uh, Sewer and Water Commission. You doing your Jerry She impression? Mr. Diamond, uh, Mr. Diamond. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, I, I you have asked the right him to talk if I, to him, but, but you, you can't. I mean, the man is sitting here doing his job. You may disagree with how he does it, but you, no, you no, can't. No, no, I just want to know if I could yeah, ask. But, but, I asked, but could the I Jerry ask? She impression was. Well, because he was looking down, ignoring the question. I, I would That's assume, what Jerry She does at, at school board meetings. I, I, Mr. Uh, Councilman okay, Boyle can so we're not going to answer it. Anyway. Um, We've got an important election tomorrow. It's probably more important than the November election. What started out for some as a great election issue is now a real decision with real consequence, consequences that affect our town's future. Our mayor served up a divisive issue that the way it was introduced left no room for debate. The result was an extremely successful grassroots movement that if successful tomorrow, effectively ties the town hands as to how to go forward. Water Watch ran a successful campaign without paying attention to the fine print. If the referendum passes, we ex we're expecting a town that barely manages to plow the snow, maintain and upgrade parks and pick up garbage to run a water system that serves just 10% of the people. We previously leased that water system to a third party because we weren't capable of running it. I have Middlesex Water Company and my water quality is excellent. It's clean, drinkable water. It's lead free, the same water quality every resident in Edison gets now. When Edison ran the system some 20, 30 years ago, there were days I understand where some of the Edison district people had brown water running from their taps. Um, I guess about a month, six weeks ago, the water quality engineer, I believe was in South River, was brought up for not doing his uh, water testing properly. Um, 
We've been subjected to untruths about the potential of lead in our water. That's just not the truth. The source of the water for Edison Water District customers will not change. I've heard a current school board member and potential councilman who sees the town taking over Middlesex and American Water, the two other, two other water systems in town. That's a scary thought. Another future councilwoman is telling us she doesn't want lead in the water. The inferences in changing and the town not taking over the Edison Water District will wind up with lead there. That's just a mistruth. The way Food and Water wrote the ordinance, no matter how large the scope of an emergency, we cannot outsource any emergency repairs if the referendum passes. That seems extremely short-sighted. As to the sewer system, in the 20 years I've lived in Edison, sewers were repaired based on emergencies. As with the water, if the referendum passes, if we have a pumping station failure, in January, on January 1, the ordinance language would prohibit us, as I understand it, the ordinance language would prohibit us from bringing in outside resources. What a mess that would be. Sewer rates have always been a politic political issue that deterred proactive maintenance of the system. I've seen the sewer reserve rated on more than one occasion to balance the municipal budget. The mayor originally gave us an all or nothing proposal Way too late in the deal, shame on the mayor for creating this mess. This decision should have been started or this conversation should have been started two years ago, not six months before the current water contract expires. Like many of you, I wasn't happy with the 40 year term of Suez. I wasn't happy with the hundreds of millions of dollars being kicked back to the town. If water and sewer stay in a house, I can only imagine the patronage opportunities that are going to open up. I urge people to vote no on this referendum, and if the town's lucky enough for the referendum to fail, I would urge the administration to go back to the drawing board, separate the water issue from the sewer issue. The sewer system has been maintained with Band-Aids for the past 40 years, another couple of years won't make a difference. Let's deal with the water first. 90% of the residents receive clean, clean quality water from private providers. We have no core skill set that demonstrates to me that we can run it safely and efficiently. Sell the Edison Water District to an, to an entity that can run it safely, economically, and professionally. Those residents in the Water District should not be subject to the incompetence of a town-run system. I, I, I take my hat off to the grassroots people. They did an excellent job with a campaign issue that they should never have had. Shame on us. Thank you. Thank you. This is uh, Mary Ann Hennessy. Mary Ann Hennessy, 20 Carmelo Drive. May I address some of my issues to the business administrator? Yes, you may ask through the chair. I'm sorry? You may ask through me. Yes, may I ask through you for the business yes, administrator? Thank you very much. Um, Maureen, I'm just gonna rattle off what I have. I don't expect an answer, but these are just my concerns. What I wanted to know is regardless of what happens, whether it passes or it fails, how are we doing with maintaining the meters? Do they switch over because I believe American Water owned them? Do we have to do anything about it? Uh, the senior freeze, uh, will that stay in effect regardless of who gets it? Um, uh, under item F of rates, do the existing residents over 65, regardless of who gets the, the, the vote, have to reapply for the senior citizen rates or will that only be newly turned 65 in 2019 applying? Does the sewer department rates also have a senior citizen rate? And if so, would the same thing happen that everybody would have to reapply again? Um, where else? Pardon me. Also, staffing. 
We don't know how many people we're going to need in both departments. Would that also include uh, administrative assistance to handle reports, filings, et cetera? Where would all of this be housed? How and when will we have materials, i.e. pipes for repairs, or are we going to go outside to like, I believe American Water has used Kramer, C-R-E-A-M-E-R. Will we do that or are we now stuck with not being able to go outside? <coughs> and are we, as the township, if we get it back, going to do repairs or are we going to outsource? And I think that's it regarding the water. Um, I also have to say I agree with Mr. Coyle about leasing the space in Metuchen. I would much rather prefer we have our own property. Um, we have space, I think, at the BRAC that should still be allotted to us other than for putting in new apartment complexes. Why could we not base it there? And my last issue, and I've brought it up before, there is no freaking gate at the BRAC base. There used to be one there when the Army was there, and it was closed whenever nobody was on that land. That's wide open, and it leaves all of the equipment exposed to anyone who wants to get in there and do any damage, any kids that want to get in there and play and fall and get hurt. We need a gate to be closed at the end of the day and on the weekend. That's my main concern there. Thank you. This is, uh, no, we're still on the list. Uh, Mr. Diamaran. Anthony Diamaran, uh, 15 Rodak Circle. Uh, Council, Pre uh, Council President, it's probably the first question is probably for uh, the lawyer. Um, it's a little weird question. Are we allowed, is residents allowed to have livestock or let me, chickens or roosters in their, in their, on their property? No. Um, I know that comes out of nowhere, but there's. Well, they have to be in certain pens. They're gonna be 15 feet wide by 14 feet high, and there's only six to a pen. Uh, I have no idea, Mr. Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's a lot, it's pretty good. It's, it's, it, the question came up from a concerned neighbor, so apparently somebody thinks that we live in Kentucky. Is there somebody with livestock in Edison? I believe so. And, and I should have known Jay Elliott would know the answer to it. <laughs> it is actually, it's been a long-standing ordinance, uh, but it, it, it's apparently grown in popularity. The county, getting back to the county, actually runs courses on backyard chicken raising. Really? You know? Yeah, they do actually. <laughs> so we, that's something we can actually give back to Charlie on, on that front that they actually encourage it. Roosters, no. Okay. Uh, roosters are not allowed. No cockadoodle doodle doodles. Uh, exactly, <laughs> but there, but there is, there is a zone. It's in, it's in the zoning code. It's in the health code that okay. uh, as to, and it is like, it's like, it is, and and counselor, you were actually pretty darn close with. So with the 14 foot high, you were you were almost right on the right on the numbers there. So it's like six per property, and that's about it. Really? <laughs> but yeah, there is. I think there's a limit of six. Has to be certain distance off the property line. Can't can't be a nuisance. I can, and like I said, no no roosters. They are required to, to file for a permit. They're, they're required to be inspected. So they would have to file for a permit, though, for this. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that question. I know this came out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> um, but to more of a serious note, um, I, I know this is brought up a lot, um, whether people like to mock it or whatever, Facebook Live. Um, I just want to remind everybody here, you know, if it wasn't for Facebook Live, I know Councilman Joshi's live streaming right now, so is Brian. Um, my phone went dead, but your messages would not be able to be received to the public until tomorrow at 7 o'clock if we go based on the normal uh, Edison TV, and they do, they do a great job. Um, so Facebook Live allows your message to get out tonight before the vote tomorrow. Um, and that's important to keep, uh, keep in mind. I think it's uh, a sense of urgency to get this going. Um, I know there's other important issues, uh, Council President, that the town needs to, to address, but it just seems to me that, you know, for, for us to, somebody that is going to be encouraging people to vote yes tomorrow, um, taking away time to make phone calls to come down here to Facebook Live, it, it seems, you know, 
something hopefully the town can pick up soon. Uh, I know the Board of Ed has uh, is about to incorporate it in their uh, in their meeting, so um, I look forward to it here, hopefully. Um, as far as tomorrow's vote, um, obviously I was one of the petitioners. I, I mean, everybody knows where I stand. Um, I disagree with uh, Councilman Sandowski. Um, I respect his opinion, but I disagree with him. I would suggest everybody do their own due diligence tonight uh, for anybody that's on the fence. There's a book called Thirst. Um, if anybody believes that Suez is not an issue and there's no issues regarding you know, uh, lead in the water, I refer to you to a Tom's River um, issue that was down in Tom's River and uh, Suez and radium going into their water system. Um, also one out in Milwaukee, I believe, as well. Um, so everybody do their own due diligence. I am going to be encouraging people to vote yes. Um, I think the scare tactics is uncalled for. I think we'll be fine. I don't think Armageddon is coming, no matter which way it goes, um, to be quite honest with you. But I think uh, Suez's history and everything else is, uh, is, is really, it puts, it puts us at risk, um, to say the least. But I will be encouraging people to vote yes tomorrow. I hope people come out. Um, and uh, no matter which way you vote, it's important everybody comes out and be a part of this process because, you know, if you complain later and you don't vote, then, you know, shame on us. So um, thank you very much, Council President. Thank you, sir. We're off the list. Mrs. Walkie. Lois Walkie, Peak Road, Edison. Um, this is about Suez. Uh, we've been given a lot of information about uh, a 40-year or 25-year contract with Suez between private and public ownership of our sewer system. I wrote this up a while ago, and I wrote it up for a 40-year contract, but it would also apply to a 25-year. Public ownership, if the township takes over, there are a lot of costs that would fall on the shoulders of the taxpayers. Here's a few examples. From the information I heard, we and this goes back a while, we'd have to hire 66 employees of all levels of expertise and some probable costs for those employees. I checked with administration on medical insurance. I think if I'm correct, I was told $23,000 for medical uh, per year per employee. I don't know if for, it's sing For a single, probably. That's what probably. I was gonna ask. So it's probably more for a family. But 66 employees at 23,000 over 40 years is $60,720,000. Salaries. Based on an average salary of 45,000, and that's just a guess on my part, I have no idea what the salaries would be, by times 66 employees over 40 years, that's $11,160,000. Pension, I checked with the business administrator, I think she said 14.11% of each employee's salary is paid toward pension. Based on my low salary of 45,000, that equals sixteen million seven hundred sixty-three eight hundred eighty thousand dollars, and believe, and remember that goes on for years and years and years. People are living longer, and we're going to be paying that pension. So the total of the three things I just mentioned, medical salaries and pension, comes to a total of approximately eighty-eight million six hundred forty-three thousand dollars. Now, all of these costs don't take into consideration contractual salary increases over the 25 or 40 years. And we know what a large, large part of the budget salaries are. And if they go on each year or each contract, we have no idea what our costs are going to be. It doesn't take into account the equipment needed, buildings to house the equipment, or road work needed after the streets are dug up for repairs. I don't know if a Department of Public Works could handle it or not. Emergency repairs have been costing the township hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the systems are aging and they'll certainly get worse. The budget presentation tonight showed the salaries and benefits as a huge portion of the budget. And we have another 66 employees we're gonna to add to that. Most probably the township would have to bond and future rates are unknown. 
All of the costs I mentioned above would fall upon the shoulders of the taxpayer and almost certainly would result in tax increases. The new 25-year version is much more favorable to Edison. There's no crystal ball, but in my opinion, private industry does things less expensively and more efficiently than the public sector. Anyone hear about the $500 widgets that the government buys? That's the public sector. Whatever the outcome of the election, I hope it's the right one for all our sakes, and it was done with the best interests of the people of the town in mind, and not for political reasons. And also, listening to the discussion about having to have everything in place by January 1st, my opinion, we're in deep you-know-what getting it in place. Also, maybe someone from the council could just reiterate to the people what a yes vote means and what a no vote means. It's a little bit confusing that a yes vote is for the town to keep the system, correct? That's correct. And a no vote is for Suez to take over the system. Well, no, not, no. It's, no? It's Suez what? is not involved in, in the vote. Okay, what's it's the just, no? The vote is just no on the referendum. The referendum, vote yes on the referendum, it, the town takes it over. Vote no on the referendum, the town does not take it over. It's open to whatever, to other avenues. Okay, well, I'm glad I asked you to explain it. So, okay, well, anyhow, my opinion, I think that it should not stay with the township. I don't think we have the wherewithal to do it. I think the tax increases will be incredible, and that's just my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Sweeney. Rich Sweeney, 313 Sutton's Lane. Good evening. Thanks for listening to me. Um, can I ask a question? Where is Mr. Rossomano? It's on administrative leave. What did, uh, on, on administrative leave, he's six months, a year, two months, a week? It, 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 it's, it's undetermined at this point. It's, it's a personnel issue, so it's, I, I'm not trying I to I understand be, that you can't discuss yeah, personnel issues. But, but I, I just like to speak a little bit. I, I'm not a, a friend of Anthony. I just know him from coming to meetings and seeing what's done around town. I'm a veteran myself. I was with the 82nd Airborne Division in the A321st Artillery Unit, but I was in the Commo section. I, I'm a believer in people deserve a second chance, especially with the, uh, the bickering and, and these primaries and everything that was thrown at this gentleman that even I would have slipped the tongue, you know? And I, I'm a believer in second chances, and I'm a veteran, you know? So, but anyway, and uh, through the chair, I'd like to thank the Recreation Department, and uh, I think she knows what I'm, I'm thanking him for. I just don't want to say it here. But, uh, but it, um, I think you did an excellent job with that thing down at John Marshall School for the amount of time you had to get it together. But you did an excellent job. Thank you. And uh, through the chair to Mr. Sand Lenny Sandowski, Councilman Sandowski, I appreciate you. This, I've been to all these water meetings. Listen, my daughter got married this weekend, and I couldn't wait for it to be over, all right? I can't wait for this vote tomorrow night to be over so we can come together as a, as a government, as a legislator. I, I can't wait that we can come together, and I, I've never seen in this town, and I've been coming to council meetings way before Councilman Deal was on the council, he's 18 years. You know, but uh, I, I've never seen, in, in primary general election, I've never seen it like it was this time, and it's sad, it's sad for, our representatives, and it's sad for the voters, you know, because even this water thing, it's so confusing, so confusing. But I know what a little bit of infrastructure costs, you know, digging roads and pipes and six-inch valves and raring supply and whatever, whatever. It's a big, it's a big nut. It's a big number. And I, I don't want to pay any more taxes. I don't want to pay any more, because I'm going to have to leave Edison. 
Ever since the primary, I see a lot more for sale signs, including Mr. Patel's uh, 251 Sutton's Lane. Uh, it's unbelievable how many for sales signs went up since uh, the primaries. I don't know why, I don't know what the reasoning being. But as far as Suez goes and that vote tomorrow, I can tell you my vote is a no. Because with five additions to schools, 4.98% uh, increase in your water or 9.8% increase in your water and sewer, uh, I don't know if I can afford to live here anymore. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ralph Scarola, 4 Longview Road. I'd just like to uh, address a comment from Councilman Sandelsky. Uh, sir, you had made a point that a couple councilmen and Water Watch or Food and Water Watch came in. I'm just a regular citizen. And I want to tell you something. They had no influence on me. What the influence on me was when a contract was put out, a 40-year contract, I deal with contracts all the time. Nobody in their right mind signs a 40-year contract. When you take a company like KKR, a Wall Street company, we all know about hedge funds. We know how Wall Street takes advantage of everybody. You, you're presenting, hold on, because you put your thing up, and it was great, and I like the whole speech, but the true fact of the matter is, I'm a regular guy. So you get a company like Suez coming here and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, which I, I assumed prior to this. Now, after this, this, they came out and sent out all their pamphlets. Obviously, sir, there's a tremendous amount of money that they're going to make. Nobody puts commercials on CNN and Fox News and all these things. If they're coming in your town, you're going to pay that back. Nobody gives you $105 million and says, hey, man, I like the people of Edison. A French company does, doesn't care about us. They don't care about who we are. They're coming in there giving us all this money. We're going to pay it back. I hear the lady talking about, oh, yeah. We got, to, you know, we got to put these people, and these are people that are in this town. If we're hiring somebody, and they're put, I'm a Republican, and you're going to hire somebody and put them in this town, that's okay with me because the guy's going to work here and his family's going to be in my town, and that's fine. I don't want to pay some French company or KKR or anybody else like that. Yeah, there's a problem. I understand the whole situation was brought up, and this council was all split apart about it. Here's how it was presented, though. Every meeting I went to, this thing was presented as a done deal. I didn't see this council once come together. You guys were fighting with them. And you, it wasn't during these meetings we said, hey, maybe we can change this. Perhaps there is an option, public, private, together. There might be separate ways. We don't know. But the fact of the matter was presented by the mayor or whoever put it out as all or nothing. So of course you have the grassroots. People stood up. People aren't stupid. I'm not as well educated, perhaps, as you, but I'm smart enough to understand I'm going to pay a lot of money if Suez comes in here. I run a small business, I can't afford to be pushed out of this town. So that's a big concern for me. And, and, and would you present it as smoke and mirrors? It's not smoke and mirrors. This lady just said, oh, the town's going to, we're going to have, they, the, the road department can't even handle it, she said, if the sewer gets ripped up. Okay, in the contract that I'm not sure any of the council people read, that's what we're going to do if Suez does it. It says it right in their contract. They're going to fix a pipe that they're also going to sub out. So you're still going to have a Kramer. We have our own, we have our, our own director. So the director could call Kramer and say, go fix the pipe and let our, our road department fix it. Because that's basically what Suez is going to do. But we're going to pay five times the price with Suez. So I just wanted to make the point. I'm not addressing you in an angry Council President, don't uh, uh, make sure on. he has his time. I just want to address some of the yes. things you said. L I allow al allow the gentleman to to go through, and then if, oh, okay. if you have any comments. I yeah, I mean, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. I, I, I yield his. Make sure he gets his extra time. Okay. I just want to tell you that I agreed with Bruce Diamond. I think Maureen could also tell you that I offered, and I said to her, I don't know why the administration doesn't do a 20-year with two 10-year options and milestones and stuff like that. This was like three, four months ago, okay? So, so we, we were talking behind the scenes. We didn't talk, you know, out of turn. Or in, and it's a shame that our town got pitted against each other because at the end of the day after tomorrow, whatever people decide, Whatever people vote, we all have to come together and live with what it is for four years, at least four years. But I think if we're going to do, if it passes, 
and we go and we spend all that money, I, I, I just can't see it coming back and, and, and going to a private entity. But, but that's for down the road. But I agree with a lot of the points that you made. I agree with that. Um, when New Jersey American came in, certain things were supposed to get done in the first few years of that contract. I remember reading it. Maureen gave me that contract. And I looked through that contract. Um, now, it's true. They're not doing any more repairs to that you know, to the line. Uh, I know at the time there was a lot of brown water in the south end and the lines had to be lined and there was a lot of things that were done back then. But this should have never gotten into a political debate. It should have never been that way. It should have been what's best for the township. Now, some people asked me, they said, well, Len, why don't you, uh, why don't you just go along with it? Well, that would be easy to do, okay? But I don't agree with it, okay? I don't think it's the, in the best interest of the town. And as council president said, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're getting Suez here. You know, once, if it goes down, it could be someone else. And then a lot of people said, a lie, but this was an RFP, it went out for bid, okay? And I know I spoke to some of the water companies, and they told me we would have lost money on this deal for 14 years. The first 14 years, they would have lost money. So you bring up a lot of very good, valid points, I think Mr. Diamond brought up some good points. I think the presentation could have been different. I was at all the meetings, like you were, or most of them. And I think that's your wife over there. I think she yes. was at most of the meetings. And she's very well versed in this, and she understands it, and she's read and did her homework. Uh, but, um, but we're not here to hurt people. Our oath of office is, is to do what's right for the people of Edison. And my job, and I feel all of our job here on the podium, was to get the vote to the 59,000 voters because they said that they wanted to have an input on this and that's the way it's going to be tomorrow, you know, whether it goes up or down. I understand, but I don't think we even had to be here. All I'm saying, all along this process that I followed, there was like two sides, right? And no one ever said, let's look at the actual deal. It was always presented as this full deal. I went to Middlesex County College. It was like the deal was already in stone and it was being put forward rather than right. saying it. So, so I think a lot of so guys- So you didn't say the transparency wasn't there, that it should have been. Yeah, because so perhaps- I, I, I thought that that was not a good meeting. I thought that that was not a good meeting. I don't, I don't think that the experts were prepared the way they should have been. But, you know, I mean, I mean, we could always look back in hindsight, you know, about this because it was a very um, adversarial meeting. You know, I mean, we, we can all agree to that, you know. But at the end of the day, we're all Edison. So I felt it was my obligation to not vote on the ordinance, to let the 59,000 registered voters of the town vote on this thing tomorrow. And that's what they're going to get an opportunity to do, you know, whether it goes up or down, you know. And, um, and I appreciate your comments. Okay, and I'll just leave. Council with President, if I can just interrupt, I'm just confused to the administration. Suez is not going to be the, it's going to go out to bid again? Could. Is that correct, yes or no? Because I'm confused. I'm in belief that Suez would be the responsible party that would assume this uh, opportunity. I mean, they're advertising, they're doing all this work to campaign for it to be voted down, but are you tell me we're going to another RFP or an RFQ? Uh I'm not saying anything of, of I'm but not saying anything. He's making a statement in I'm council waiting president for no, no, no. Let, let's, tomorrow. Let's clarify. Yeah. We need to clarify. The question, this. well, allow me to clarify, sir. Thank you, council. The question was, is this a vote for Suez? And I said, no, you're not voting for Suez. You're either voting for the referendum or not. Suez wasn't even voted on for introduction. Right. We're not even there. So, again, let's just be clear on what we're doing and allow people to understand what they're voting for. But the, the part that I'm just unclear, and the fact you're not answering me, Maureen, I'm more confused, is that we- I am we, answering you. We're having we, a referendum tomorrow. Council President's absolutely correct. Nothing has come to the council. You, you haven't voted on Suez but now. The, but, the refer, but the qualified bidder is Suez, correct? Or incorrect? That's, that's the person I think that, they were the only bidder. Right? They were the only I'm going to let legal in. Oh, okay. that, that, <laughs> that was one of the problems is that there was, there was only one bidder. But just to be clear, Councilman, the vote tomorrow is whether or not the township has the ability to enter into a private contract. It doesn't approve Suez. It doesn't reject Suez. 
if, if the referendum is, is approved, then that's one thing. If the referendum is not approved, then the township is still in the driver's seat to either run the system ourselves, contract with Suez, or tear up and start over. Um, those are the options that would be, that would appear tomorrow. But tomorrow has got nothing to do with whether or not the deal that was previously presented by Suez uh, would be voted on. Councilor, I disagree. The, the bidder, the qualified bidder is only one bidder and it's Suez. Unless you're telling me today we're gonna go for another bid. That's the answer I wanna know. Are we going for another bid, yes or no? That, uh, Councilman Coyle, I think it, that the attorney- you're, you're smoking Mira the public. There's no, no not, question no, he's not. that Coyle. it is Suez. Councilman Coyle, <laughs> Sorry, the Councilman. attorney has answered the question. I want facts to prove, I want pure yes, data. you should be. Allow, he explained that exactly the way that it is. There is nothing to do with Suez tomorrow. Absolutely nothing. Whether the town decides to move forward, if the referendum fails, the, the town has not voted on anything. Whether it votes or not, it's a whole different story. That's where we're at in the process. The public portion wasn't even closed. It wasn't even introduced. And I'm not saying whether it's going to be uh, whether the town is gonna move forward, whether the town is gonna change the deal, or nothing's gonna happen. Nothing is contractually existing right now with this. That is the absolute fact, and that's what everybody should know. But, the, Council President, <clears throat> the facts are the only bidder was Suez. Right. And we are not And nobody accepted that bid yet from this council. The council has to accept the bid. The council has to open it up and then accept the bid. And, and that has not happened. Okay, do you plan on opening up the bid to other people, yes or no? Councilman Coyle. See, that's not, a question you're not gonna uh, answer. And I, and, because and nobody knows it's that. It's not you, fair, you are it's trying to, Again, Councilman Coyle, you asked the question of what does it mean to vote tomorrow, okay? That is exactly what the question was. This is the vote. Either you vote for the referendum or you vote to knock down the referendum. That is simple. Where we go from there, we don't know. I'm looking forward to reintroducing this conversation after tomorrow because it's my understanding and it's my impression that no one company would have a campaign of over a half million dollars to invest in making sure this referendum is shot down. We went through months of, of, of public meetings for Suez. Every piece of literature says paid for by Suez. I find it hard to believe that we are gonna open up an opportunity to redo this bid. I, rest, I, I stop comments, but that is a fact. That is an opinion. So again, allow the gentleman to please finish his comments and then we can move on, please. All right, my last thing and I'll get out of the way here. If, it, if the yes vote comes in, could the contract or setting up the township sewer department be handled as Suez was gonna handle it? Because basically when you read the contract, Suez is a project management company. It appears to me that they're subbing most of the work out, they're handling the administration part of it. That's my first question or point, go ahead. I'm yeah, the, the answer is no. If the contract passed the way, the, specifically on the water side, uh, and I don't know if it was intentional, but basically, um, I, I, somebody asked me a, a similar question today. What it says is that the town has to own, operate, maintain, and something, the water system, shall. The language with the sewer is a little more flexible. Um, so the answer is, can we go out and hire Jay Fletcher Kramer to, to you know, there's a major break? The, the way I read the ordinance, no. We, we, lose, we lose the ability to subcontract any portion of it out. Um, you know, whether that was intended, I mean, candidly, I think Councilman Coyle raised earlier, at least I, where I thought he was going was that we could have changed the ordinance and, and that was one of the major concerns I had, um, you know, if we had the ability. Um, but, you know, that, that is neither here nor there. Just, no, you're not gonna be able to. Certainly on the water, the sewer is going to be uh, subject to interpretation and, and what everyone's appetite is to how to deal with it. Okay. If it goes to the no side, just for argument's sake, mm -hmm. as Councilman Zendelski pointed out, 
would that be readdressed for other options off of a 40 year in concessions? Yeah, there could be, there's, there's two things could happen. If, if, if it's no, uh, two, at least two things could happen. Uh, three, well, three things can happen. Uh, we can proceed with the current deal or some variation of the current deal. We could re, it's not really a bid, I don't want to use that word, it's, it's a procurement. We could, we could re procure a contract. Uh, or we can operate it ourselves uh, and see how that works. So those three options would still be on the table. All the, that, that's what a, so it's, it's, you know, we can operate it ourselves and hire out Jay Fletcher Kramer to deal with major issues or I don't want to keep plugging Kramer, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, um, I get it. <laughs> Sanzari could also do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure, yeah. you know, I'm sure there's other major contractors out there. Um, but yeah, so those the the options would be there if if it's a no vote. If it's a yes vote, then it's I think we're pretty limited. All right, thank uh, you, thank you, sir. I do want to comment one thing. We we've had so many discussions, you know, whether it's Ms. Walkie or Mr. Sweeney and Councilman Sandelsky. There was one thing that was said that really uh, struck a, a chord here when Mr. Sweeney said that we have he hasn't seen the council and the people and the town being pitted against one another and so many different ways uh, related to this thing. I hope there's one lesson that was learned here. And I respect the administration, I respect Mayor Lanky, but every single part of the entire, from the rollout, to the introduction, the rollout, the messaging, even last week related to the so-called deal related to the 25-year deal, Every single part specifically related to Suez and this contract has been a blunder. And there's no question about it. We need to have more communication and uh, people need to understand things better. Th this is, you know, this isn't happen all the time. This is just, in my opinion, this is one thing that the administration has just royally fell fat, flat on its face on. And I think that's the reason why we're in this position today. So I hope this doesn't happen again, and communication is needed. Otherwise, we really wouldn't be in this position. We keep talking about this 25-year deal. You know, when I got two calls from seniors that I've never spoken to before today, uh, they reached out to me through Facebook, and they said they had some Suez representative come to their house and explain to them what the 25-year deal is. I'm a council person, and I don't even know what this 25-year deal is. Like, is that not an absolute embarrassment? Like, it, you, we should never be in this position. And, and we're pitted in this position. That's why this, this meeting has gone on, because honestly, we have not had that type of communication. I don't want to go down this path, but honestly, we, we should not be in this position had it been for more communication specifically related to this contract and Suez from the administration. Council President. Yes, sir. I, I agree with a lot that has been said tonight uh, by so many different people. It seems that uh, every speaker can make points uh, that are genuine or accurate or real. And at the same time, the whole situation remains today and I believe will remain tomorrow extremely confusing. Uh, most people that I've spoken to they really don't understand how large this is and what the question is. And even tonight, you know, most of the residents here we've had in these council chambers before, they're, they're in, in tune with, with what goes on here. And even tonight, the residents most in tune will say, can you explain to me what a yes vote versus a no vote means? When, when we come down to the night before the vote, after six months of all these public meetings, and we have credible residents trying to understand and be clear about what's going to happen, I think that says something. This has been disappointing, as Councilman Joshi said, and I agree with you. This has been disappointing from the beginning on a lot of different sides in a lot of different ways. When we have Mr. Sweeney come up and say he's been here for a long time, and this is the most divided that we've ever seen. Um, I've been here 18 years and I have to agree with them. Um, and that's the perception that we're giving out and we have been giving out in the last few months around 
especially around this Suez situation. One of the things that's personally disappointing to me is, and they say perception is reality, is that the perception that this was a done deal from the beginning is unfortunate because I can tell you that there may have been members here who were leaning for it, and there may have been members here who were leaning against it, but there were also members here who have not made up their mind or did not make up their mind, and as Councilman Sandelsky said, we were looking at different options also. What happened was we've never been able to really fully go through the process. We were never able fully to explore the different options because there was a perception that it was a done deal and it had to be stopped immediately and the only way to stop it was to get a petition going, put together a referendum ballot question and vote on it. And that effectively halted any process that we were initiating. One of the things I'm proud of is that we said from day one, because there was a sense uh, early on, there was a sense that you, you can't railroad this thing, you can't do that. And we can go back and you can look at the tapes, every one of them. We said, that's not going to happen. No, we're not going to do it in two public hearings. We'll do as many public hearings as necessary. We'll answer every question that's necessary. Why? Because it is the biggest deal that certainly I've ever seen and the town's ever seen. And there was so much to it. There was so much to understand. And at the end of the day, we should have gone through everything and looked at everything. And we that may have altered where we are today. We were not given that chance because of the way the thing, as Councilman Jos Josie said, was presented, the perception of how it was presented, the perception that it was a done deal, which was unfortunate, uh, the perception that uh, it was in the middle of a, an election. We, it, nobody can take that part out, and if you do, then you're fooling yourself. This was in the middle of an election. So there, that's where we are today, and it's disappointing to hear how confusing, and I know, I don't even have to hear it, I know because my neighbors, who I've lived in the neighborhood for a very, very long time, come to me and they have no idea what's going on. And these are people who are pretty in tune to, to what's going on. That's unfortunate for all the reasons that were stated here tonight. And everybody, all the speakers, one side or, or the other, um, they bring up really good points. But I'm disappointed tonight that we are perceived as divided as we are, and we are, that we are perceived as, as this thing being a done deal when it never was and that it's as confusing as it is to the residents of Edison. That's, that's unfortunate. I hope everybody uh, you know, can do the best they can. I don't think anybody's going to go out and read a book tonight to, to, uh, you know, to educate themselves um, on something. It's a nice idea, okay, and not a criticism, but I just don't think it's practical or reality. I, I think that uh, we're, we're in a, a spot now Tomorrow, the vote, as Mr. Sandowski, Councilman Sandowski said, the vote will be taken, and then we'll, we'll deal with it. And we'll deal with it. We'll deal with it one way or the other. We'll have to deal with it. But this thing, from the get, in my 18 years, was the most disappointing project, endeavor, contract thing that we ever dealt with, because it really, it really showed uh, the weakness of our, of our local government. It really does, of our local township administration and our, and our local government. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Laura Scarola for Longview Road, second time. Okay. So the question I was asking when I came up earlier was, um, you've had this contract for well over a year. I want to know if each councilman has read it, just by a show of hands if you've read it. We, we haven't had it for over a year, just so you That's know. That's the date on it. But we haven't had it for a year. When did you get it? I don't know, March, April? It's February. Right there. Fe February? Yeah, I think the first thing we got okay. was um, in the beginning of February, we got Mott and McDonald's report on both the water and the sewer system. It was probably in the month of February that we were presented with the, uh, the contract. Okay, did you read it? That's my question. Did you read it? Everyone has read the contract? Yes, we read it. Everyone's read it. Okay. Did you know that the starting date on the contract is January of 2020? Yes. Start yes. date? 
So that doesn't give us a lot of time, even though this isn't about Sue as uh, president. I mean, obviously, that doesn't give us a lot of time here. There are no other bids, and the way bidding goes, whatever bid is in is the one you have to consider. We can't turn around and say, you know what, we, we'll just consider a different bid, a bid that didn't come in. That was the only bid that came in from private companies, so we don't really have choices. So this is the only choice that was given to us. Suez has conducted the meeting in March, and I believe it was again in um, May, is that correct? And then uh, perhaps one other. Once the uh, petition was signed, they didn't continue with their meetings. But uh, when I, I went to the meeting in March, I went to mostly all the meetings, and uh, when they presented it, they said that um, there was gonna be fixed rates, and, and they gave us the schedule. I, I know I've gone over this, so I'm gonna go over it again. I'm gonna go over some of the things that are a real problem for the people of Edison, okay? And I'll start with, again, we have the four private companies. And Edison Environmental Partners is an LLC that was formed in Delaware. The reason why they do that is to protect their assets from litigation. You have ba basically no um, redress. If there is something serious done, we have serious um, bills, serious uh, uh, breaches of contract. We cannot really collect as the creditor um, for liability damages. There are so many restrictions in this contract against the township of Edison that it's really it's re, it's ludicrous. It's ludicrous to consider. So the way I I I saw it, and the way many of the residents saw it, was that to even have considered this contract to me is almost like suicide for the township of Edison. It's that bad. You're worried about um, increases in payroll and things like this. You have four for-profit multi-billion-dollar companies who are going to be presenting their um, giving us employees. Okay. In this contract, in this independent uh, consultant's report, it discusses how many, how much of benefits we're going to have to pay for these employees. So whether you're concerned about Edison Township employees, you're going to be picking up even more employees. You're going to be picking up, they need a 30,000 square foot building for $900,000 a year, which doesn't include increases. It doesn't include CAM costs. Um, the rate schedule itself includes variable rate components. So what you have are, are a rate component, a revenue requirement of 11% because you have four for-profit companies. They all have to make a profit for their shareholders. That's just the way it goes. When you're running a township, you don't have to worry about shareholders. The, the rate payers are the shareholders. Okay, we're not looking to make a profit. You're not dealing with these multi-billion dollar companies. They don't lose. The reason why they have a stabilization fund, for people who don't know, on top of all, they have special event um, rate increases. If they're back on any of the charges, anytime there's special, um, any type of uh, event that happens that would cause rates to increase, they have to pass it on. They're called rate event adjustments. They pass them on to us. There's like 16 of one, 11 of another. It just goes on and on and on. There is no cap in the rate, actually, that they can uh, uh, um, assign to us. In fact, uh, Food and Water Watch did extensive research, and they discovered that whenever Suez takes over, rates go up by 59% nationwide. But in New Jersey, they go up 79%. So in my mind, I don't think that the, the council should have ever even considered this. When the first uh, referendum was brought up by Councilman Coyle to, um, I guess what you, you brought up a referendum to, to cancel this, to, to, to renegotiate, right? To, to bring it back to, to, start, to the starting position. It was a non-binding a non-binding referendum. referendum. And Councilman Patil also offered it as well. So you had the two councilmen who offered that. So that would have given us a chance to maybe have more meetings and say, hey, look, how can we fix the problem? But that didn't happen. You guys just barreled right through. When, when you read this contract, you realize this, this is a go date of January 1, 2020. You know, this doesn't give us a lot of time. So even though we're not talking about it now, what, how much time is left to talk about Suez? Suez is the only company who was in the bid. This is the private company that's going to buy, to buy, to buy this or lease the system for 40 years with the KK, KKR, you know, um, investment group. 
Now they, they presented us with four different bonds that we're gonna get. The rate that we would have to pay them, there's also a rate attached, it's a 4.8% rate that we would have to pay them for the bonds. If we got the bonds ourselves, they'd be around 2%. So that's millions and millions of dollars right there. Um, the independent consultants report estimated that this contract would cost us 3.5 billion, a little bit more. But they didn't consider the 170 million dollars at the end, we're at around 32, 33 million right now um, in receivables, but they would be at 170, Sue has told us. The consultants report only said 130, so think about that. You're probably up to about five or six billion dollars at the end of 40 years. So when, when you talk about costs, you gotta, you gotta compare apples with apples. So as I continue reading this, I found some other very strange things in this contract. For example, and I mentioned this before, 48 hours to inspect any work. Absolutely bizarre. I mean, do, were you aware of that? They're gonna dig holes, put pipes in, put all the materials in, 48 hours, it's buried, it's gone, we show up, job's done. You can't inspect anything. Everywhere there's lawsuits, and they're all over against Suez, constantly. Misappropriation, overbilling, overbilling, unsubstantiated billing, constantly. Why? Because this is why they have 48 hours inspection notice. Great, nobody can inspect who was there, what they used, what kind of materials, how many hours, the length of time, you can inspect. There's no possible way that I can understand that you considered this contract. I'm, I, honestly, I can't, it's, it, I have to really, I sit here and I wonder, how did you even consider this? The termination clause, it's outrageous. They get to terminate this contract for any reason whatsoever, and charge us back charges. So if they go bankrupt or whatever, well actually if they go bankrupt, that's one of the, one of the only reasons why, how we could get out of it actually, unless we can also uh, prove that there's criminal activity, which is vir virtually impossible since you can't even inspect what they're doing. So we don't have the same access to terminate that they would have. Any, all we have is arbitration. So what we have is one attorney against another attorney. Yes, ma'am, I'm gonna ask you to wrap it up. I'm giving you nine minutes, just one more minute, please. Oh, I didn't think there was a limit on this. Six you, minutes. Because when the oh, I thought that was in the beginning. I thought that was in, I've heard people up here 15 minutes. So I think the points I'm making are very important. Tomorrow is the vote, and I'm encouraging people to vote yes for these reasons. In fact, do you know, it, the, in this contract, if we collect the bills, we wanna collect the bills, do you know that they charge us, we have to pay them $1,000 a month to collect their bills? One of in our township employees collecting the bills, did you know that? Did you know that? Nobody knew that, yeah. I didn't think so. I'm gonna ask you to wrap it up. Um, yeah, I know you wanna ask me to wrap it up because these are very important things that the people of Edison should know. This is why the people of Edison are saying vote yes. This contract is so bad and um, it will be so detrimental for us and I think in the future we need to ha also form some kind of um, committee, some oversight committee, which includes the regular people here, the residents, so we can have a say as to what happens. Besides council meetings, I think there has to be some other type of committee for oversight. So something like this doesn't happen again. Thank you, ma'am. Council President, does she have a chance to come back up for her? No, treatment? sir, I already gave her another extra five minutes now. Council President, I just want to commend you for all your work you did um, for the residents of Edison. A lot of homework. He taught me some extra things as well. I have read this contract and I agree the same. And I, I'm, hope, I'm looking forward to the opportunity of them saying that we can reopen the bid, which I think will never happen. Yes. I think uh, there's a lot of lawsuits that would happen for that. I think we're stuck with Suez. But you've done a lot of work. I, I tore this thing proud. apart as best as I could. I mean, I work for, for a living too. But I want to uh, make one other point to you before I, I sit down, and that's they Council have President, this. President, with respect, I mean, this is, I, well, I respect everything you're saying, but this is, we, there has to be some consistency. Like, uh, yes, ma'am. She's going to speak for we nine have minutes. We have to. Yeah, your time is up, unfortunately, ma'am. I've seen I've people up here 15, 20 minutes, and you well, didn't turn it down. a lot of because of the council. All right, here's my last point, and I'll sit down. Their business philosophy, lowest life cycle cost. I mean, look at the terms of their, of their contract here. They operate everything to achieve the lowest reasonable operation and maintenance costs. They're looking to save costs at our expense. That's how I'm gonna close. Thank you, Thank you. Ms. Nemitz. As 
Mr. Nemitz, 162B Faith Street. <clears throat> Probably the first mistake that I made in this uh, entire process was when we were discussing what we were going to do about having a recreation center in town, and we had all those lovely meetings last year here in the council chambers. I had this little voice in the back of my head that kept saying, how are they going to pay for this? Where's the money coming from? This is wonderful, but I'm waiting to hear how they're going to pay for this. Well, uh, when the Suez deal was presented, I found out how we were going to pay for it, which was not what I was expecting, anticipating, or what I thought should have happened. I feel like it's the frying pan or the fire, and neither side is good. There's no decision here that's good. So my question to you at this point is, okay, because I'm still looking at it, how, how I'm going to vote here. If I vote no, based on what I was just hearing, does that mean that even though you haven't decided that it's going to be Suez, are we stuck with it because of the way the presentations have been made and the way the contract has been presented and because they're the only bidder and we've got this bid in front of us? Are, no. we, st are we stuck with it? No. Council, the, the, the council never took a vote on the contract. Council can vote it up or down and candidly the administration can determine to pull it go back out for another procurement to keep it in-house, to change the deal and represent. So there's a whole number of options that can, can still occur. That, that's, I think, some of the points some of the council people are making is that it's, this is not a done deal no matter what happens. If, 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 the, if the referendum is defeated, then, there's, there, then the, those options would still be available. They could vote on it. They could vote on it as is, they could vote on it as revised, they could decide to vote no, and they could vote to, uh, or, the, or the administration could, could renegotiate and present a different deal to council for further discussion. Well, my instinct at this point is to vote no, because I would like to see a start over. This thing has been so badly handled from the very beginning. How the administration ever got away in this town with going through a process that nobody knew about for all that time to come in with this kind of a presentation is beyond me here or anywhere. You know, this is like what they're doing down in Washington these days. You know, it's unacceptable really unacceptable, and I have been horribly disappointed with the entire process. Very disappointed. I mean, I've spent a lot of years going to all kinds of meetings in this town and seeing a lot of things be done and participated in a lot of things, uh, including all the times that I was on the rent board that we had all kinds of landlords in here overcharging tenants, and we got everything straightened out. Everything got straightened out. Nobody got taken advantage of. But this is, you know, we're on the verge of one way or another, we're, we're going to get screwed one way or another. If we, if we ha have this referendum go through, I know we're going to get screwed one way. If Suez were to come in, we'd be screwed a different way. And neither, nothing is good here. So what I want to do is I want to see us start over and learn from the lesson that we've heard, had here, listening to all of the sides, listening to all the information, and decide, in fact, what the best way is to try to balance our needs with what we're going to do to handle those needs. We never had that discussion, ever. Never had that discussion. That's wrong. That's not what government says. When you've got a problem, you discuss it, and then you decide what you're going to do. You don't come in with a decision that says, here's what your choice is. This is what you need to do. And then you have to fight about it because you didn't discuss it. Wrong. 
just plain wrong. So, in the hopes that we can start over, I'm going to vote no. And that doesn't mean that I don't think that we shouldn't have a role for Edison being involved in a whole lot of this, because it's our town, and we should have some, some participation in solving our problems. And it may mean, no matter, no matter what, every time we have a, a line that breaks someplace in town, what do we do? We go hire a contractor to come in and fix it. So we're going to do contractors no matter what, even though we have a lot of our own people maybe that can do some stuff. So we have to accept the fact that we're going to be doing contractors. But we need to have a way to do it that makes sense. And so far, this is not making sense on either side. It doesn't make sense for us to think that we're going to do it all ourselves with no help, because that's not going to work. This is like Booker saying, uh, uh, you know, if you think you're going to do uh, energy without uh, atomic energy, you know, without, without nuclear plants, you're not looking at the whole picture. Well, we're not looking at the whole picture here in a way that makes sense. So, I hope that we can start over. I don't know what this vote is going to be tomorrow, but even if everybody votes yes because of the referendum, I hope that there is going to be some logical discussion during the, the time that we have to do implementation of that. That's going to be what we should have done in the first place, and that we're not going to rush out and start hiring all kinds of people without a plan. We didn't have a plan either way. There was no plan because there was no discussion. Bad administration. Thank really you, bad administration. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, one last comment. The Clara Barton Neighborhood Preservation Committee is meeting on Thursday night. So we'll have a chance to announce to the people in Clara Barton, if they haven't already heard, and I'm sure they will have heard by then, what the vote was. Thank you. It'll be one more opportunity for people to have something to say about it. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Council President. Anybody else? Can I just have a question to the attorney, just real quick, to Mr. Northgrave? The, the question I have is, the comment that was made about start over, and in the past, we've had several bids, and you've gave the advice to the council that we'd have a lawsuit if we didn't accept this bid. Could you describe to me what language that's currently in this contract that we'd have to change to allow another bid? Because that's why I've been trying to be careful to say it's not a bid. It's, it's a, I don't think it's technically an RFP either, but the township retains the ability. You certainly had the ability to vote no if you didn't like the terms of the contract. That's the way the procurement is set up. With a bid, unless you have a, a reason, uh, you'll recall that we, we had a concern about one bidder who, though, although they were the lowest bidder and they met all the criteria, there were certain concerns. And I don't want to go into those because we discussed those in executive session, but the council decided to just move forward anyway. You would have had the opportunity. That would have been legally defensible. If it's a straight up bid and the, the lowest bidder comes in and council decides, you know, I've, I've, I've heard about that company, they're not good, and votes, votes a contract down and goes with the next bidder, then you've got a lawsuit. Um, so the bid situation is much different than, than the procurement under the public-private partnership law. And that's, that's what this was. So the council would have been well within its rights if it's ever got before it to vote no, vote it down, and say to, say to the mayor, go out and negotiate a different contract or see if there's a different process. That's, that, that was certainly on the table with regard to this. But that's why, I, again, I've been trying to avoid comparing this to a bid because there are significant differences between a bid and this procurement. Okay, so we don't, so do we face any consequences in lawsuits if we were to deny this opportunity with Suez? Can we start all over from ground zero and reopen the procurement process to qualified vendors again and start from ground zero? 
And it's, it's a little bit of a hypothetical, Councilman. I, th I think you've heard me enough times say I don't like hypotheticals, but I know that uh, you're going to, uh, I, I understand your questions. Let me try to answer it like I'm this. Just, and if, I'm trying just to clarify just the point that let, I'm yeah. in belief that it's, it's going to be Suez. Teach me how it can't, it can be another contract. I, 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 Councilman, I can I try to answer your question. Thank you. The, the, and that's what I was getting to. This council can vote no. I don't like the deal. Even if it's, even if the terms are completely changed, every council person sitting here can say, I don't want it. I don't want to vote for, I don't like this term. I don't like that term. I don't like another term. If, however, you were to vote here and say, I don't like it because the, you know, the gentleman who presented was rude to me, or the, you know, if it's arbitrary and capricious is going to be the standard. If, you're, if your decision is, can, can be shown to be arbitrary and capricious, then they could, they, well, they could sue you no matter what, but the likelihood of success on a suit, if the, if the contract were rejected, and you know that I'm pretty conservative about these types of things, but the likelihood of an adverse result is less than one one hundredth of a percent. Um, unless one of the council people said something like they weren't going to vote for them because they didn't offer me a job or they, you know something ridiculous. Um, but if you just voted no, if, if a majority of the council voted no because you didn't like the terms, they would have absolutely no recourse. I, I, I tried to be as direct as I could. Thank I you. That. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Sam Lamb, 20 Parch, please. Assuming the yes uh, votes prevail tomorrow, uh, I guess the, my question would be, what um, recourse would the council have if there was a repair that they felt would be, you know, too financially burdensome? Would they be able to contract out the work at all? Or, or would it require another referendum to change the terms of this one? A, you can't have another referendum for four years. Council, if this is adopted, this is going to be the law in Edison for four years. Um, as to the sewer, it's probably a gray area, as I think someone asked earlier. As to water, I think there is zero opportunity to, uh, to, to contract out anything. The way the, the way the ordinance is written, I, it, it appears to me, and hopefully we'll never have to test it. Um, hopefully we'll be able, hopefully nobody would test this on it, but if, if we went out to contract, somebody could certainly try and argue that we had no ability to do it under the ordinance. Um, and so that, that the town would not have that ability. You mean to say that the township would have a legal liability you, you would be concerned that the township might have legal liability if they went out with it to contract some work. It, 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 let me try to answer your question a little bit more directly uh, with, let me make a reference to the ordinance itself, if I could find that file in here. Actually, I don't, uh, yes, I have it. Hold on one second, sir. The ordinance. The ordinance says, uh, the township's division of water supply shall retain ownership and commence the operation, management and control and maintenance of the township's municipal water system and all extensions and improvements together with all services related to such purposes. The township shall not exercise authority to lease or sell its water system or contract with private firms for the operation and management of the water system. So I, I wow. find that language to be pretty restrictive. The yep. language, in, that's in terms of the water. The sewer is, for whatever reason, it only has that second verse. It doesn't have the first piece. So you would recommend to the township not to contract out as opposed to trying to test it? I, I again, I prefer not to answer hypotheticals, right. but I think if, if we had a major issue, then, and the, Business administrator called me and said, "We just had half of South Edison blow up, uh, and we need, and it's well beyond this department's ability to do it." I would probably recommend that we hire Jay Fletcher Kramer anyway, and and hopefully we will not, 
get sued for being in violation of the ordinance. Wow. Uh, but I think that's just a practical answer. That's not a legal answer. It's a hypothetical. There's a whole right. lot of right. facts I assumed to make that answer. And again, I'm really uncomfortable doing that. No, I appreciate that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. First time speakers. Second time speakers. Rebuttal. Motion to close the public portion. No, uh, Mrs. Hennessy, uh, uh, I'm going to give her three <laughs> minutes here. <laughs> Sorry. I just went a little. Maybe I should have gone this way. Now I'm a little more confused. Mary Ann Hennessy, 20 Carmelo Drive. If the vote is yes, and it leaves it in the hands of the township, and we have a problem that's larger than what we can take care of, we can't go outside and get somebody else in? The ordinance reads that you cannot contract out. That's correct. For four years? For four years. No, so much, if, if I could just clarify that, it's, it doesn't say for four years. It says, we, the law says we can't change it for four years. Sorry. After four years, I don't, I don't mean to be contradictory, yeah, yeah. Council yeah. President, but I want to be clear on this point. After four years, then council could consider changing the ordinance. That's you, the sir. distinction that needs to be made. Thank you, sir. So a no vote is definitely for Suez. No. 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 See, that's the thing I needed to find out. No, a no, a no vote, vote means is the what? referendum does not pass. That ordinance doesn't pass. So if that's what happens, then what happens after that? We're right back where we left off a few months ago. We can accept the contract, we can change the contract, we can decide to run it ourselves, or we can do, go out for a new procurement. Under the no. Under a no. So we are definitely not locked into Suez coming in at all. Am I correct in that? Yes, yes you're correct. So then why would they spend so much money if they didn't think they had a right away to get in. in the hopes. Uh, the, the, I, I can answer that question, but it is rank speculation on my part, and, and I, I, it's just not in anyone's interest for me to do that. So am I to think that that leaves the door open for them? Yes. yes. It definitely leaves the, it leaves the door open for, for the, this council, for the mayor to, to the, the mayor has never actually even brought the contract, never been put on the agenda. But the mayor could put the current contract on the agenda, could put a revised version of the contract on the agenda, could uh, go out for a new procurement, or could just ignore it entirely. So it's not for Suez, and it's not against Suez. So we Su haven't voted in Correct. any way, shape, or form Correct. to include Suez Correct. at all. We didn't even introduce Correct. it, right? Bill? No, no, yeah. it's, 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 never, it's never appeared on the agenda. So. Yeah, it's still, as, it was still in the public hearing process. As I recall it, it there yeah. was a public hearing scheduled for like June 6th that got canceled because uh, the petitioners handed in the paper. Right. So we were still in the, you know, the, the public. Uh, <laughs> we, we were still in the process of getting all the information uh, with the public meetings. Um, before this, until the petitioners came up with this. So no vote had ever been taken place by this council to either introduce an ordinance or adopt an ordinance. So again, the vote tomorrow, a yes vote, would put into place the ordinance as written by the petitioners. A no vote would, it would be basically the status quo. We would have the ability to look into other options, or we'd have the ability to look in to continue um, doing it ourselves, but with some alterations to, alterations or modifications to what's been presented by the petitioners. Okay, now, here comes my comment. All right, you gotta put your hand your on the up. Put your hand on the invisible Bible and raise your hand and say there is no way in you know what that Suez is coming in here if it's a Thank no vote. Thank you, ma'am. I'm not gonna ask council members to do that. No, your time is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Do we have a motion to close the public portion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Meeting stands adjourned.